Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> We're just a few days away, ladies and gentlemen, for the return of NBA regular season action. Got a lot to get to. Uh, some good games last night, getting ready to close up preseason here. Uh, also, some scary news. If you're a Charlotte Hornets fan, like, I honestly, I actually haven't seen that many Charlotte Hornets fans this season. Um, Mellow Ball went down, and, and like, literally, are they going to start tanking? Like, that, that's the question. Uh, that, that's brought up by a Hornets fan uh, in the group chat. We'll talk about that. Uh, also, I, I went over uh, to Slam Goods, our, our sponsor here, and I saw this dope Golden State Warriors hat. I want to buy it. And if you remember, uh, run TMC, right? That is the hat. I'm going to get that up here, too. Uh, if you want to, Mike, put your hand up. Maybe you'll get up here. Hopefully. Don't want to talk about myself today. Uh, also, man, it's good to be back on a Tuesday. I just realized that we are here uh, over at HoopSpaces.com. We have the Eastern Conference previews done. The Western Conference will be done by the end of the week and put up there. Uh, we're also looking for writers. So if you are a writer and you want a place to be able to put your you know, words to be seen by thousands of uh, potential readers, you know, hit me up in the DMs. Maybe we can work something out. Uh, big shout outs to everybody who always comes through. And shout out uh, to somebody who I use as motivation for myself. She's in the audience now. That's all that. All right. I'll be back in about 15. Appreciate everybody. Good morning. All right. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Happy last week of the NBA preseason. Happy uh, autumn. Happy fall. Uh, happy pumpkin spice lattes crap uh, season. I, I, I stood in line at the gas station. You couldn't pay with your card at the pump this morning for whatever reason. And I had to go in and like literally three people in front of me all drinking Starbucks pumpkin spice lattes. Like I, it's, it's a scourge. Like you smell it, you see it. And, and I just want it to go away. I can't wait for it to go away. Much like, this upcoming season for the Charlotte Hornets. I don't think they can't wait for it to go away because it has been bad since the summer. It has not gotten any better. Uh, last night, losers to the Washington Wizards, 116-107. The Charlotte Hornets close up their preseason winless, 0-4. Um, Terry Rozier looked good. He always does. LaMelo Ball went down early in the game. Um, they, he will be having more tests later today to see how serious that is. And if that's serious, if he misses four to six weeks, I, I just, you know, chalk up the L's, you know, get some developmental time and good luck. Six is looking good. 113, 97 over the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, Tyrese Maxey leading the charge. Jared Allen uh, going for back-to-back -back all-star games this season, 19 and 12. Not going to lie, Jared Allen is looking real good. And, and what I mean by that, he looks like he's going to have a more uh, prominent role in the offense. Uh, the Houston Rockets are going to be fun to watch. But so are the Miami Heat, ladies and gentlemen. 118-110, Heat over the Rockets. Max Struess uh, exploded for five threes. Kevin Porter Jr. looked good. Uh, but Miami did it again. What is that? We'll talk about it. Uh, and we asked the question, is, is Chris Paul done? Has he just, is he losing the father time right before our eyes in preseason? I, I've watched this game twice basically now. And that's the question I have. Nuggets 107, Suns 105, the return of DeAndre Ayton 19 and 11, uh, Bones Highland. Pretty good game, 16, 6, and 3. All right, we've got uh, Cash is already ready to come up here. Sebastian is here. Mike is here. And I want to thank everybody down below. I see some great content creators in their own rights. Want to give them a shout-out. Jose from 77 Spaces is in the building. And also, uh, all Nat of the Nat Fluential podcast uh, and Hoopstress's fame. Uh, it's just good to see. All right, there we go. Um Hey, Cash was here, the NBA bad guys making a return uh, for season two. 
We're going to go ahead and get him up here. Uh, we will open up with him since he was first. Cash, good morning. How you doing? Chris, I had a question for you. Mm-hmm. How are you, first of all? Uh, I'm good, man. I'm here. Uh, Twitter Spaces is going to be bugging out pretty much all week. Uh, they're they're running some um, pre-update updates. Like, they're, they're laying the groundwork for pre-updates. Oof. Man. <laughs> you know who that is calling? Who, who's Maxie. Max. Yeah. He's saying, I got now. I ain't got next. I'm really perplexed, Chris. He looks better than Darius Garland. He looks better than Donovan Mitchell. He looks better than both of them at the same time. I seen him outplay Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and Ben Simmons also. What am I watching here? The ascension. What I I I'm like maybe Chris can help me understand. Maybe I'm bugging. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe it's my eyes. Maybe is there a pecking order? Should it be I, at the I'm top being... of the pecking order? I, I, I like Tyrese Maxey. I, I don't know if he's better than Darius Garland right now. He might be better than Steph Curry. <laughs> you just got to get him on his own team. We might need to get this guy on his own. I'm a fair supporter, Chris. He might need to have his own team. He really might. I'm ready to ship Joel Embiid and James Harden if this thing don't work. I'm ready. Oh, that, that, is, that is crazy. Ready I to love build it. Oh. This kick. What do you think? Uh no, he's 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 gonna be good. He's not better than Steph Curry right now. Stop. He shoots better than him. No, he doesn't. Since the All Star Blake last year, he has. Not for well, not for when you account for volume. It, it, it's not that it doesn't really correlate. Like stat static shots. Like this is the argument that we had with Tyler Hero versus Jordan Poole, right? Like they are way closer than a lot of people want to admit. I have Jordan Poole slightly higher. But it's because of how he's able to score, but more importantly, the environment into which he scores, right? So, like, Tyrese Maxey benefits from Joel Embiid and James Harden, similarly to the way Jordan Poole benefits due to Steph and Clay and that he, offensive system. But remember when he went head to head with John Morant with no James, with no, uh, I think no James Harden and no Joel Embiid and still dropped 35, 33, I think, and, and then won the game with all the clutch buckets. And then remember when Joel Embiid wasn't there? He gave 34 to Miami. <laughs> and that was in the playoffs. <laughs> and then we got to forget when Joel Embiid and James Harden sat and him and Shake Milton cooked Miami. He gave him 30. <sighs> Peeling back the layers of the onion, Chris. That's all you all, might all, burn people's eyes a little yeah, bit. Yeah, are you are your eyes watery? Because uh that's 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 something that's not mine, real. not mine. I mean if you're a Jordan Poole fan or like <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes, I'm um, a Jordan Poole fan. Yeah, uh, hey, how's he, he doing by the way? He's he's he's, he's fine. Doing did amazing. You, did you just see him? He just lit up some team for like twenty six and like in three minutes. quarters. In three yeah. quarters. Wow, Max, he was doing that in a half. <laughs> What's up, Nat? Nah, just you know, letting y'all know he got now, and he don't got next. Got now in Philadelphia. Got now in the. You hear that? <laughs> <laughs> oh lord! That dog in him now. Every, every everybody's oh. getting sound effects now. Everybody's their own producer. That dog in him. Ah, uh, all and right. If your guy had that dog in him. We'll just leave it right there. No, yeah. what do you mean by that? He doesn't want that. That's why but he said I don't want that. Smoke. I don't want that smoke. <laughs> if you know what I mean. The people Stop. know what speak, I mean. Chris speak knows speak what explicitly. I mean. <laughs> Leave it right. Let me let me let me I get digress. everybody through. Let me I get digress. everybody else through, and we can uh, open this back up. Uh, up next, we got uh, Sebastian to say good morning. We got Micah, and then you've already heard uh, Nat from the All Nat Fluential, uh, the Nat Fluential podcast, and All Nat also of the Hoopstresses who had a dope show last night. Uh, Sebastian, good morning. Then we'll go to Micah. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> good morning, Chris. I am 
happy to be back home in Puerto Rico for a week, you know, have a little break from the university. So happy to finally see my family again. And man, you know me, this Heat team is exciting me. This is this team is making me happy. Uh Max Bruce had a really good game last night. Uh we saw some other good things from other players. Uh Jovic didn't shoot the ball too well, but he was very good on the rebounding side with 12 rebounds. And that really caught my eye. Uh, some, of, some of the other younger guys, like Kane. Kane might look like he's another, another undrafted, underrated guy that the Miami Heat just, you know, scout out of absolutely nowhere and, you know, make him a really good role player. Uh, definitely, obviously, as I said in the last place, I am not going to go in too far with the, as far as the final result, because I don't really care about final results, like final scores of the teams in the game, but much rather than the individual performances. But um, we saw some really good things last night from this Heat team. Uh, yeah, we're gonna we'll, we'll get to it. This is just the opening of more. Uh, no, 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 yeah, for sure, for sure. I just want to get some some points out there. <laughs> Micah, good morning. Good morning to you, Chris. How's life treating you? Oh, uh, it's, it's doing well. It, it'd be better if you didn't have to smell all that nasty pumpkin spice latte, right? No, nah, for real. Like it's 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 inundated my life. It's it's garbage. <laughs> Right on, man. Uh, everything's good. It looks like I'm about to co-host a space, you know, for a uh, for a mass space. Got somebody from the DM, fellow East Texan, and uh, doing like everybody with the uh, that was with Larry Burton, the three point shootout, competing for second place. So, but um, yeah, I watched that Philly game, and man, I was I was thinking about it. Like I asked you about it uh, a space a while back. I'm thinking Melton's going to be an underrated pickup because he looked really good from what I think. And, you're too, you're uh, too loud, Cash. Yeah, and like, and I love Tyrese, but come on, man. Better than Steph, that's the definition of standing. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Cash, don't worry. He's not worried about standing. He's going to stand all season. That's what he does. <laughs> All right, let me uh, let me get to Nat, and then we'll open it up, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've given her two introductions. Uh, Nat Fluential is the handle. All Nat is the brand. Hoopstresses is the platform. Uh, phenomenal woman, phenomenal Golden State Warriors fan. Uh, Nat, good morning. How you doing? Good morning. Wow, what an introduction. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> You're, hey, look, I, 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 I love it when people succeed uh, because they put in hard work. Uh, I love it when people succeed because they they follow their passion, and I love it when people succeed because they don't quit. You know, like it's it's dope to to be able to see that, and I'm very happy and proud for you and of you. So well, there you go. You. But let's talk basketball, not me. So yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I'm just curious. I want to know what um, Cash meant by if he had that dog in him. I, that's what I just want my question answered. All right, there you go, Cash. You you, you have a question. He ain't got that dog in him. The dog is on the court. The dog is off the court. He got the dog on the court. Yeah, literally have know. no idea what that means. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what that <laughs> Maybe. means. Maybe, but I've been listening. It takes to, a dog to recognize a dog, Chris. I've been listening to men talk about this situation for the last several days and make complete asses of themselves, quite frankly. And that's me putting it mildly, like perpetuating the worst stereotypes and particularly about black men. All right. Like that's first of all. Secondly, like, let's just, let's, let's take all the street bullshit out of it because like, Let's let's just take that aside for a second. There was no, it was a workplace assault, really. Okay, there was but no let, street. Let's, take, let's take let's just take that all out of the equation for a second. Yeah. Draymond hit him. He fell to the ground. A bunch of people rushed over. There was not even an opportunity for Jordan Poole to respond. So to make an assessment. Like, he doesn't have the dog in him. Like, we don't even know what the fuck he would... I'm sorry. We don't even know what he would have done 
because there was no chance for him to respond. Right. So it is like a completely baseless statement to make. It makes no sense. Like one person got hit and there was not an actual ability to respond, period. So you don't know. Like everything that we know of Jordan is that he doesn't back down to Dre. That's likely partially what triggers Dre. He does not back down to him. And if you follow the team and follow the Golden State Warriors, this is a well-known thing. He chirps back. He claps back. He is confident. He is cocky. And he's also been like this over his entire career. I don't mean just NBA career. I mean college career and throughout his playing life. This is a well-known thing. So if you don't know, get your facts straight. Okay. Hold on. No, I didn't interrupt you when you were speaking. So... Two, to make any kind of assessment of a dog or not a dog is silly to me. That's first and foremost. Secondly, secondly, I don't want to hear shit from anyone. Dame and all the other men I've heard saying this. Oh, it's just unfortunate because like where I'm from, I'm taught to do like, yo, I'm Jamaican and I don't want to stereotype this, but where I'm from, I'm taught to pick up a buckle and hit you in your head. Right. But I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't do that in the workplace when someone offends me. You know what I'm saying? I see NBA players all day push each other on the court during games and don't nobody come to blows. So don't tell me in practice that his expectation should have been street logic to kick in and put up his hands to defend himself. That's stupid. And I don't like to just call things stupid, but I've been hearing pure stupidity about this situation and everybody telling me what they would have done. It's dumb. And let me just make clear what I'm about to do right now is make an analogy because people get really like silly when you make analogies. But it's like, for example, when a woman gets hit or something in a relationship by a man and you hear people saying, why didn't she do this? I don't know what they should have done. Blah, 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 blah. Where I'm here to tell you, right? People look at me as like a really strong woman. And a man did put his hands on me one time. And when it happened, The way that I thought I would have reacted in this situation, I did not. And it doesn't make me any less strong, but it's because like I was in utter shock that this man thought it was fitting to put his hands on me in that situation. It was not something I ever thought could happen to me. So you don't know how you're going to react in a situation. You can say what you're going to do in a situation, but all of this trying to criticize Jordan Poole because of how he reacted in a situation that was so quick, fast, or to even sit up there and talk about the rest of the team not coming to his defense, which is bullshit, because we saw Andrew Wiggins go over there, Moody was over there, and the rest of the team, like you read, if you read Marcus Thompson's article the next day, if you haven't, go read it, they didn't know what happened. The the back and forth between Dre and pool, that was a common thing in practice. So most of them, they never turned around. They didn't look because they didn't know. They didn't see the force. They didn't know what happened. They didn't see Dre hit him. So that's why they didn't run over there because they didn't know. So like everyone stopped speculating and making assumptions and saying shit because you don't know. But there's lots of information out there for you to get up to speed and understand the situation. But stop speaking about Jordan, his character, if he's street smart, if he's this and that. You sound crazy. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Well, I mean, you, you, yeah, I do. You really want to try? I do. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry I don't, I don't know if you really want to try. I'm sorry. I don't need about... apologies. That's fine. I said that yeah, because yeah. I wanted to make. No, I just want to let that. you know I feel for you. Look, and, and for the I'm women good. that go that was through years that. Ago. Um, I just don't think this is over. This is something I would say within the realm of men. Not saying you can't speak on it or nothing, but we have our own little, you know, girls got they, we got our own thing. And that's why it's not a street thing or nothing. It's a pride thing. Um, it's, Man, you 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 got to be careful because you're speaking oh, for yourself on that. Oh, like, and it's like not I, it's, it's not absolute. 
It's not every <laughs> every man ain't the same, right? But there is a sentiment, and it does hold validity. And it's hard. Like I commend him his professionalism at that for showing him showing back up. A lot of people wouldn't show back up to work at that type of situation. It's a hostile work environment for him, clearly, right? Clearly a hostile, and 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 I don't think it's a productive uh uh uh, uh for him. As, as, as it's like it's kids, 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 kids gonna see this. This might be part of his legacy. I hope it's not his legacy. How his image has been tarnished. So it's like I just got a feeling this might not be over, even if. But see, the problem. The it, problem is, is that it was over. It, uh-uh. it was. It was completely. We don't over. know the future. We don't. No, know no, no, no. no. Listen over. to listen to what I'm saying. It was over, right? It had happened, and just like Nat said, like they had stopped anything else from continuing to happen. It's in Marcus Thompson. I think there's another writer who wrote it, and it was in house. But then the video leaked, and now people on Twitter and on Instagram and on Facebook are continuing it on when literally there's nothing you can do, there's nothing you can speculate beyond a five second grainy video. Yet here we are, and this is why we haven't talked about it here. Because, like, there's nothing to talk about until there's something to talk about. Everything is just repetitive speculation that airs on the side of absurdity. Like, that's all it is. I know one thing, and I know this for sure, it's called intuition. And I, you know, just dealing with behavior analysts, I know he wants his get back. I know, and maybe he didn't get it yet. And maybe, maybe it might not happen. It might not happen. And that's where the dog comment came in. That's all. I digress. I don't want to go back and forth about it. I feel how I feel. You can feel how you feel. And I'm sure Jordan Poole feels exactly how he feels, regardless of, of, of if it's in-house or, or whatever you guys say. I know he got that dog in him for real, for real. And this ain't over. Mark my words. All right, Matt, you, you got the final word. What you got? Um, yeah, just one. I'm a woman, not a girl. Or because you made a reference like girls gonna like I'm a woman. And and so just want to clarify that. And then secondly, you mentioned also something about um, you know, like how it's making him look, or I don't remember your exact words, so I don't want to mischaracterize them. But like if you're forming any sort of negative opinion about Jordan Poole based on him being, I don't know, I'm not going to get into the whole debate of whether it's a sucker punch or not, but being sort of blindsided by his teammate, I think that's reckless on whoever's part may do that. And that's all I'm going to say on that. Like, there's no opinion to be formed. To me, the fact that the man finished practice that day, the fact that if there wasn't a video and this situation wasn't reported, that we wouldn't have known anything happened when he just played the other night in the game. To me, that's all you need to know about Jordan to know that like he's a very strong person and is not going to let shit break him, at least not publicly. You know what I'm saying? And if he was affected in some way by what happened, he'd also have every right to be affected. If it is affecting him because he's human and we're all humans, that would also be okay. We got to get rid of these kind of stereotypes that men are supposed to act a certain way. I understand that's what a lot of y'all were taught, but we were all taught a lot of things that we were miseducated on. And that's why therapists exist for us to go get help with it. That's my final word. It's not miseducation in my house. Sorry, sorry. See, this is the difference in people. This is just the the, the pure, the plain difference in us. But yeah, I got you. Because like, that's what we do. My son's learning the same thing. That's what we learn in my family. Now, I don't look at it as a miseducation. This is just how we move. This is how we live. And we can live differently and have different different views, you know. What one considers a miseducation is, is a great education for others. I didn't say anything about you specifically, but I hear you. Yeah, love, 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 love. Yeah. All right, uh, we're gonna move on. Welcome everybody uh, to Hoop Spaces. Happy Tuesday, our first Tuesday show of the season as we wrap up preseason in the NBA. Uh, four games last night Washington over Charlotte, 116 107. 
we asked the question, is, is the bottom falling, falling out of uh, Michael Jordan's house? 116-107, LaMelo Ball down with a ankle sprain. He'll be having tests today to see if there's any uh, level of severity that they need to be concerned about. I'm expecting a, a four- to six-week timetable. And if that's the case, one starts to wonder, uh, is Charlotte going to enter the, their name? In the Victor Wabanyama Olympics, uh, the Philadelphia 76ers beat the Cleveland Cavaliers 113-97. One thing that I did see is an awful lot of redundancy with Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell. Uh, we're going to talk about that because that, that could be concerning. Uh, I think there's actually a way to fix that, and it involves Evan Mobley. Miami beats Houston 118-110, uh, but that's not the story. The story is, is Haywood Highsmith and Jamal Kane. Uh, two players that the Heat did it again. Uh, Jamal Kane, undrafted out of Oakland University, has come on this preseason and has performed phenomenally, so much so that they signed him. Uh, he'll probably start out in G League, come back up later on in the parent roster. And Baltimore's own Haywood Highsmith uh, likely winning this starting position going into the um, opening of the season. Denver 107, Phoenix 105. Uh, and I tell you, I watched this game. Chris Paul... Uh, questions are going to start being thrown out there in the social media world of whether he's done. Uh, we asked that. Is he losing the father time? And we want to thank uh, our sponsors, Slam Goods. Head over to Slam Goods and use promo code Hoopspaces to save 15% off your entire purchase, just like Zach did uh, picking up the Survival of the Fitted hoodie. And I literally went on there this morning because I told you, like, hey, they have other stuff. And I just happened to click on the wrong one. Do any of you remember this sweet Golden State Warriors hat? I had uh, one of these hats when I was younger, uh, and I'm probably going to buy it at the end of the show. It's on sale right now for 28 If you use promo code HOOPSPACES, you'll get 15% off that sale price. Make sure you go over there. Also, if you missed any part of the show, you can catch the show on YouTube. Uh, powered by audiolabs.io. It's just a recording. We'll be uh, cutting it up and producing the podcast once the season starts. Up on stage, you already heard uh, all that. Check her out on the Hoopstresses. Had a great show last night, ladies and gentlemen. Also here is Hawks Fan TV, the number one source for Hawks news and information here on Twitter. Uh, Air Maxi, a.k.a. Cash Bakari, the, the wandering chess samurai Boston Celtics fan, Danny D uh, here as another Warriors fan. And unfortunately for Mike, uh, somebody who's going to tell him that the Mavs are not better than the Warriors. And then also our friend from across the uh, world, Samir, is here up on stage. If you want to come up on stage, raise your hand. We'll get you up here. If not, there's a chat box in the bottom right. Hop in there. We'll get your takes up there as soon as we start talking ball, which is going to start after we say good morning to Alex. And then uh, we'll, we'll get into it because I'm going to open up this Philly Cleveland game. Go ahead, Alex. What's up? Oh, good morning, Chris. Good morning, beautiful people of Hoop Spaces. Happy uh, Tuesday. This is Tuesday, right? Yeah, it's Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Um, it's a beautiful day. Uh, and, you know, uh, it's our first time back in, in Hoop Spaces show in, in a hot minute. So glad to be back, Chris. Appreciate you having me on. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to another exciting season. And I'm looking forward to uh, Jordan Poole becoming a Orlando Magic next season as well. <laughs> Jeez. Why do you say that? Why? Why you gotta say that? A little just... birdie. A little birdie told me, Chris. <sighs> yeah. All right. you know, I treat the new NBA season because, like, my year kind of like revolves around the NBA season. So, like, when everyone's new year starts in 2023, like this is my new year. So, one of my New Year's NBA resolutions is not to entertain silliness. So, <laughs> we're not going to entertain the silliness. <laughs> Down one. Mm. Is I, I it love... really silly though. Yeah, it is. It is really silly. Um, I yeah, I'm not even gonna entertain because I I love it, Alex. We'll 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 talk about that like maybe when we get closer to the trade deadline. <laughs> oh, throwing in bombs. T. Rexy is also up here joining us. All right, but first, Philadelphia and Cleveland, one thirteen ninety seven. Uh, of course, I watched this. I'm a Sixers fan, but I also watched this because I wanted to see uh, what Cleveland's got you know, working here with Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell, their acquisition over the summer. And, and look, this is what I saw. Um, they're redundant. And the more Darius Garland has the ball, the less Donovan Mitchell's going to be effective 
That's what I saw. I don't know if anything anybody else saw. That's what I saw. 28 minutes for uh, Donovan Mitchell, 31 minutes for Garland, 10 shots for Garland, 9 shots for Mitchell. It's not the shot count. They're going to have the same type of shot count. They're going to hit around anywhere between 17 and 20. The issue is the type of shots. Donovan Mitchell ain't going to get those shots he got in Utah. That's what I saw. I want to know what you saw. Uh, if anybody who caught this Sixers game with the Cleveland Cavaliers, that's what we're going to open up with. We see one hand up. We'll hit up Micah. Micah, what you got? Bro over there eating skinless uh, french fries for breakfast. Uh, this, this is, now, this is a top of the You're going to let me make it, Chris? I, I, I gave you three seconds and you missed, man. But go ahead. What you got? Yeah. <laughs> First of all, uh, I live in reality, so you don't have to tell me it's unfortunate. I know the Warriors are best. And uh, but just a statement you brought up, just a statement that you brought up earlier. Yeah, CP's cooked. He's he's cooked. Like I've seen it over those last several games from last season. He used to be a great defender. I don't care what Pat Bev was trying to tell people. He ain't been like a cone like this his whole career. He has like six, I, I can't remember exactly, but he has like six or seven all defense teams. But I saw him get hunted by all three of our guards. Not just Luca, but all three. Everybody was hunting him. So he's not a good defender. Um, I, it looks like his handle's not as tight because he's having a whole lot of uncharacteristic turnovers. So, yeah, he's cooked. Like, these players age, and people just need to understand that and just stop being surprised when people look different when they're 37 than they did when they're 24. It happens. All right, appreciate it, man. Like, do you do construction? Because, like, it always sounds like you're doing construction. Yeah, yeah, I work at a construction site. I, I build trusses. I work in a shipping department. All right, that's that's what I yeah that makes sense. Appreciate you, Micah. Uh, all right, um, T. Rexy, Danny D. Bakari, we we'll go to you in that order. T. Rexy, what's up, man? It's good to see you. I know you probably hit up um, uh, the Kyrie signing the other day, right? You was down there watching the game. Um, yeah, yeah, I was at the Nets practice yesterday, um, a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. But it was yeah, yeah. Y'all gotta say something about this Lakers fan. Y'all pathetic, man. That fool all the way down to practice park, big Kyrie to some of the Lakers, and then practice a park. Are y'all killing me, man? Got that video? I got. I, I'm gonna post it on your page, man. It's pathetic, man. Get it up here. Yeah, I I saw the video. We'll get into that a, a little bit later if you haven't seen it. it. But the but the, the practice park, it was crowded, man. Like I should come early, but I, I live all the way to like Harlem. Yeah, it was packed, man. Free food, drinks. It was crazy out there. I see, I see, I took a shot of picture. I did, man. I didn't get the chance to see Joey Badass perform. Um, the guy for Power came to. It was, it was crazy, man. It was beautiful. I just would say, I'll see you later. I got to get back to work. One week away for the NBA season start. Can't wait. No, I appreciate you, T-Rex, and we'll definitely talk nuts uh, with you. And if you don't know, there's a couple of Nets creators uh, that T. Rexy frequents, so make your, sure you shoot, uh, shoot him a follow because when he's on here, he'll be talking some Nets. Um, we're going to go back to the Hawks, uh, the Cavs, and the Sixers because I'm going to go to Hawks Fan TV because this was a question that after the Donovan Mitchell trade was made uh, that we, we talked about briefly, who has the better backcourt? Because a lot of people started saying that it was the Cleveland Cavaliers because you had two players who'd be able to handle and shoot with range over the Atlanta Hawks, Trey Young, and DeJounte Murray. Alex, your thoughts on the Sixers and Cavs, and what do you see when you see Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell? No, I mean, I mean, I still think Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell are, are really good, uh, to be honest. And uh, this isn't me to, to try to shit on Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell, but, you know, objectively, and I'm not saying this just because I'm a Hawks fan, I think the Hawks have the better backcourt, um, simply because for two, two main reasons, guys. Number one, out of all four of those players – uh, you you should say that Trey Young is the best player out of those four. So not only do the Hawks have the best player out of the four, but on top of that, all four of them uh, 
oh, or excuse me, three out of the four of them suck on defense, right? Trey Young, Donovan Mitchell, and Darius Garland. They're all six feet tall, 170-some pounds. They're tiny. They can't defend. Who out of that group is an all-NBA defender? Oh, that's right, DeJounte Murray, who's on the Atlanta Hawks. So we have the best offensive player out of the four, and we also have the best defender out of the four. And we also have the two better playmakers out of the four as well. Uh, so when you factor in all of those, uh, you got to go and lean towards the Atlanta Hawks, uh, which is why I say they have the better backcourt and they have a top two, top three backcourt in the East. Y'all saw it in the first two preseason games. DeJounte Murray had a damn near triple-double in his first appearance, shot 9 of 13 from the field. Trey Young in the second game had 30-plus points in the first half against Drew Holiday yet again. And poor Drew Holiday, I don't know what it is, but every time Trey goes against that, man, he cooks him for 30-plus every single outing. Uh, so, Drew Holiday, if you're listening, I'm sorry. You probably have PTSD. You can have nightmares of Trey Young. But, uh, yeah, man, I mean, Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, greater than Donovan Mitchell and uh, what's his name? Darius Garland. Shout out to Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> I, actually, I actually have his basketball shoes, and they're, they're pretty nice. So, um, he's got that going for him. Oh, man, this is going to be a good season, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you tap in uh, with Alex here on Hawks Fan TV. It's got a stable of writers and crew ready to give you everything you need, including including that um, – uh, instigation, uh, if, if you need some energy through some instigation, uh, of which the next person who's going to speak uh, is going to claim that I am an instigator. That is our friend Danny D. Uh, good morning, Danny. Uh, how are you? And are you going to pick up this sweet Golden State Warriors hat? You know what? That's a hot hat. I didn't know they sell hats like that. I was uh, I may. And good morning. Um, I, I was looking at something like from my husband. He's a Spurs fan. Maybe they got an old Spurs hat with Tim Duncan on it or Ginobili or the um, um, uh, David Robinson on it or something. Uh, yeah, he might like something like that. But yeah, I may, I may. You never know. Um, if they got a, a, a war, I might pick up that Warriors. And then if they got Detroit Pistons. I'm gonna pick that up too. Um, well, the 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 only thing I know they have of the Spurs is sold out, and that's a Tim Duncan Funko Pop. Oh, damn! He would like that if I got that for him. Uh, I have to keep on looking. Um, but um, you know what? Um, you know, uh, with guarding, because I didn't get a chance to watch the game because I was in court like, yet last night. So <laughs> I had to pay attention to the evidence being presented last night. Uh, but um, what I will say about the Darius Garden, uh, Garland and um, David Mitchell, um, cause I caught some highlights. It's going to take time for them not to revert back to old habits. And new system, new team, new identity. You got to give them at least, I give people at least 20, 25 games. Um, it's an 82 game season. This is where you also try to win games, stay afloat, stay, uh, stay in the playoff hunt. And you also get more acquainted with your, your players and, and your thing like that. So you got to give them time. So I want to do that. Um, Philly's cute, but let's see what they do to the regular season. You know, y'all trying to put Maxi in this, this. I mean, consistency. That's all. That's the word we're gonna use today. Consistency. Can he be consistent, or is he going to be talking about one thirty-point game he did last season, or maybe it was two? I can't remember. Consistency. I know where my consistency is. It's over there in the Bay. So you know, consistency is it's a wonderful thing. Um, I ain't trying to start the fight. I'm just just saying. You know, you know, I, I don't have to regurgitate because you know Nat did all my heavy lifting for me. <laughs> you know, I was in here two step and praise the Lord. I'm like, yes, yeah, Jesus preach. There you go. Hallelujah. Anyway, you know, so <laughs> love you, Seth. <laughs> Look, I had some coffee this morning. My husband brought some caramel Starbucks coffee. You put in a little cake cup, it come out, and it was it was pretty tasty. Coffee overrated. I I don't drink coffee that much. I mostly drink tea. You know, that's what I did. But I decided to be different with, with my bagel this morning. And um, other than that, you know, you are instigator, Chris. You love staring apart. You love just putting a question out there, leaving it, dropping it. Like, go at it, chicks. Go at it. Uh, just go at it, y'all. Just go at it. Y'all just like dropping stuff and sit there and laugh. You, we know you're a secret GM. You got, you got uh, ears. No, you no I, I am not a secret GM. League. I wish I was a GM. They got, yeah. they got some of the, 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 Chris, the best you got the perks. Hook up. You like Master P and I got the hookup. You got all the stuff in your trunk. 
I nah. know you do, homie. I nah. Chris, you be lying. Yeah, over well, here. no, there, there, there actually is a Master P up here. Uh, he, he just joined the stage. Uh, and and he's one half of the Dunk Tales podcast. Everybody should shoot him a follow and actually put the Dunk Tales podcast uh, on rotation. And, and that's a man with no name, right? That's that's Scotty Dripping. What's up, Scott? How you doing? Scott or Snot? Which one? Snot. Come on, Snot. man. Either either or, but you know, both of you are Hall of Famous. Yeah. <laughs> what's up, brother? Um, so I'm, I'm just late tuning in, so I don't know what's been covered. But uh, I'm gonna have to push back. I think Donovan Mitchell might be a better player than Trey Young. Um, I get it. It's, it's, it's too early to make jokes. Like this. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, man. Look, I get. I, 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 I know you like Trey's uh, like uh, the barbershop lollipop on the ground kind of haircut, and that's like you know stylish or whatever. No, nah, so but uh, yeah, I gotta go, Donovan, because Donovan's actually done it deep in the playoffs. While we haven't seen Trey do it in the playoffs yet, so wait, I get, excuse me. Uh, I mean. Excuse me? He didn't do it like Donovan did. Donovan went toe to toe with those with those boys and was putting up 40 Trey, 50. So Trey, Trey Young averaged 30 points and made it to the Eastern Conference Finals, sir. Okay. And what did Donovan do in the playoffs that, that yeah. one year? So I'm, I'm going to go with Donovan just because of the size thing. Um, and then, like, then yeah, Trey Young. Just, size. Uh, yeah, but one of them was actually, one, one of them was actually like an athlete who actually, like, <laughs> did contact and scored hey, the rim. So. Trey Young's an amazing athlete. Well, I mean, it's, it's like, 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 like Jumping out and like dunking on people, but like so yeah, he's not he's not doing that by Donovan. It so I'm gonna go Donovan as far as if I'm gonna build around somebody, I'd rather build around Donovan Trey, than Trey. But um, it's all good. It's good all, it's all opinion. <laughs> what about miserably. the what about the playmaking? Um, um I mean, yeah, Trey's a, he has the ball in his hand. He's a good passer, but um, no, this that's my personal passer. opinion. I'm, I'm always it, unless it's somebody like Steph Curry or Dame, um, I'm gonna always go with a little more size and a little more a little more athleticism, I guess. I like to, I like my guy to have a superpower. Right. Trey, Trey, Trey's great, but I mean, they almost missed the playoffs. Like they were after they made the East Conference Finals. What they do the next year? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like the the size he's talking about isn't the the height, y'all. Like Donovan's got thirty <laughs> pounds on Trey. Yeah, a little more physicality. I, I want some a little more. So I get it. Trey's a nice player. I, I, I like him a lot. He's good. He's fun to watch. He's a great. Are woman. you wait? What's but, are um, you defending Donovan Mitchell over Trey Young? I mean, yeah. He don't even look better than Tyrese Maxey. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, Tyrese is nice. I like Tyrese. They was on the court, right? Let me ask you a question. When they was on the court all this preseason, right? Be honest to yourself. Who was the best player on that court? Jesus Christ, we're not adding Tyrese Maxey into this. Well, the, if, if you're actually if you're actually asking, the best player on the court was Jared Allen. Donovan is older than Trey, and he ain't even make a single all NBA team. Come on, there's levels to this, Snotty. Do better. If you knew better, you do better. My yeah, man, I mean, my man was holding Mitchell down. Can you answer the question for me, please. I don't want. Is the phone on? I know. I I, I already Hello? answered. I already answered your question. Jared Allen was the best player on the floor. Wait, this last is my night. question for Snotty, really quick. Like, why are we what acting about? like Trey Young if he's just on the floor doesn't give you the best offense in the NBA? Why don't stay out of this? Year man. He he out. he. See, he didn't say that. I mean, because he he does. <laughs> um, but it's like. Factually true that he does, but yeah, that's I mean, no, it's, it's, like it's, we, yeah. So it, this is you, you can do all the stats you want. Like we watch basketball, we know that Steph Curry gives you the best offense in the NBA when you're on the floor. Not not Trey Young. No, it's literally yeah. Trey, yeah. it's literally Trey Young by the numbers. So 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 like factually, Snot didn't actually say that, right? Like like you you are misconstruing what he said to fit something you want. He didn't say that. No, he, but he's he, saying that he, he's, he no, wants I'm everybody saying, to know. I'm just, he wants everybody to uh, know that if you look at the if you look at some kind of numbers, it says that. Atlanta has the best offenses on the NBA with Trey Young on the floor. That's what he wants people to understand, what he wants people to hear. Yeah, but, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, just understand the facts, correct. But we also know that basketball is a holistic thing. If you just look at a stat sheet to do it, then you're doing it wrong. So enjoy oh, that. Hey, you could also enjoy make the that. argument that Utah had the best offense. Like, they had the highest uh, efficiency rate. Yeah, they did, but he, like, he so, didn't want to do that. Man, no, so what, are, what, are, what are you – like, what are we arguing here? I just gave a stat, Akil. You gave a stat. What yeah, stat's correct? true, true. But, like, this is my thing when it comes to Donovan Mitchell and Trey Young. Trey Young's just better than him, man, like, at everything. I, I don't really know what, like, Donovan Mitchell I, I, is better than him at on a basketball floor. I'm, I'm with you. I don't know what we're doing. Like, this shouldn't be a conversation. Ooh, I, 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 the truth so hard to tell. Thank you, Akil. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, so, we want to. We... Hey, going back to Cleveland, though, um, she was absolutely right. You got to give them at least 20 games, right? New team, new situation, new hierarchy. 
Um, I don't like that pairing as much. Atlanta pairing is better because I think, you know, DeJounte's defense and his uh, playmaking and, like, his ability to play without the ball in his hands is better than Garland and Mitchell. So that's a, I think it's a better – it's a more clean fit maybe. Um, and they – I don't know. Yeah, redundant's a good word to you with Garland and Donovan Mitchell. You know, they play a lot different. So, um, yeah, I, I like the Atlanta fit better. Uh, let's see how they all perform together. You know, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. Go ahead, Alex. What do you got? This is the last thing before I leave. The 2025 games in any other NBA season, that, that, that would have worked. But because the East is so damn competitive this year, those 2025 games, if they go 500 or maybe just a little above 500, that, that's, that's going to cost them down the line. Uh-huh. So um, I got the Hawks top five seed, book it, top four seed, Cleveland, Toronto, y'all be fighting for a play And Thank you come, for coming to my TED Talk. One love, go Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Now that's also yep, fucking. Yep, yep. I'm gonna get, oh, I'll follow you man. right out the door, bro. Man, I cool. He's better that, than Donovan that's... Mitchell. I don't care about the deep dive and analytics. They told me that was for losers who want to take a deep dive and can't explain stuff. Tell you, you saw the game. The eyes, Chico. The eyes never lie. I'm just, I'm just, you can't give one preseason game and, and do those kind of. Oh, problems, but it was so. two. Okay, two. <laughs> you can't do two preseason games, my brother. Oh, you can't do five oh, then when it comes to game, regular season, I, but I just want to know before I leave. How many times are you going to move the goalposts in a regular season? How many times are you going to move the goalposts when you're not admitting that Jared Allen was the best player on the floor last night? Oh, 33 points. 30, 30, 19 points in 33 minutes. My guy played 12. Come on, Chris. We played small ball. We was experimenting. I hope you have a good day. They was playing like it like was game Snotty. seven of the finals. I hope let's you have a good day, let's Cash. Let's I love let's y'all. Take care. Wait, Snotty, what's your team again? Let Maxi build up his resume before we start saying that. Let, let's give him a good, solid 30 game. You know what I mean? feel the same way about Donovan Mitchell. His resume's already there. He's already done it. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's kind of already done it for a couple years now. So, like, that's, that's, that's uh, whatever. For like, five. <laughs> yeah. So, whatever. Um, um, I'm a Celtics fan. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, By the uh, way, Celtics are going to be good this year. A lot of people wrote them off for no Celtics. reason. I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, obviously, I'm concerned about uh, Robert Williams and his, uh, his, his health issues. But other than that, I'm, and obviously, the EMA thing is going to be kind of, you know, it's going to kind of be a, a, a byline for the whole season. But it's going to try to fade out as long as they win. But uh, back to the, you, you got it. And this is, this is just a pure NBA fact. It's not, you cannot make any proclamations on any team until about 20 games in the season. Like, that's just standard. We, we've already kind of established this as anything. Because yeah, a lot of veteran teams, you have to go through, have to go through teams, a quarter of the season. A lot of veteran teams are going to start slow and kind of work their way up. There's going to be young teams that come out the gates, like, you know, without without a scouting report on them, they're going to come out the gates and maybe look like world beaters. But then about about 20 games in, that's exact, That's like a good number. You can kind of, after about 20 games, you can see uh, like a five-game span of that, what a team kind of really is. And that's just how I mean. I've I've been watching the NBA now for you know twenty twenty something years almost, and that's that's like a standard thing. So whatever you think of that first week, if it if it's still holding after game twenty five, cool. If it's not, then you gotta you know it's, it's probably who the team really is after game twenty five. Unless you're the San Antonio Spurs, which we all understand, we all understand <laughs> you got fifteen wins. Let me get Micah and um Samir in here. Keel, go ahead and uh, hit your oh, mute. Oh Chris, la- last yeah. thing for Snotty. Uh the um, yes, sir. NCIC called uh and, and apparently they filed a report. Jason Tatum is still missing since the finals. Have y'all have y'all seen him by the chance yet? The man the man is the man is on a milk cart. He is M I A. He's in it's, the like, gym. It's, it's like when it's like when somebody is like a it's because Jay, because Jalen Brown has already stepped into that role and he's ready to hold it down as long as he needs to. So, um, I mean, I can't argue with it. He was terrible in the finals, you know. But the fact is, he was in the finals while you were home watching them. So I don't know what you're really talking about. So it happens. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Yo, man. Uh, let me get Samir and Mike in here real quick. Samir, good morning. How you doing? I am fun, Chris. How are you? I I'm, I feel as though uh, we are already in halfway through the season uh, and we're fighting uh, for the Boston Celtics and the Atlanta Hawks to get the last top four seed. That's what I feel like. How are you doing? Yeah, me too. Me too. But uh, I just see now that uh, the practice session of Carmelo Anthony, they are pretty doing well at their end. So what about their trade 
and the rumors of trading this session where he landed uh which Carmelo which, I, Carmelo hasn't even signed he's he's a free agent from what I understand are you talking about Lamelo yeah 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 well Melo rolled his ankle we're still waiting on the report of the uh the um medical uh, exam which should be actually going on in about 10 minutes from what I understand they were trying to shoot for late morning so we'll get an update later on today like, that's all we got okay. and yeah until then we got nothing but uh, neither do the hornets <laughs> Micah you had your hand up what's your question then we're going to move it over to uh, Keel want to say good morning to everybody we got a couple more creators in here that I want to give a shout out and if you haven't heard uh, of the Dunk Tales podcast shame on you because it's one of the best podcasts you can listen to. Put it on your rotation. Micah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I just had to jump in on that Trey uh, Donovan conversation. We really want to talk about how people looked in the playoffs? How was Donovan looking in those playoffs last year? How like how are they the worst clutch team in the league if he's, if he's that? Like, they're both pretty much same level defensively. Trey's a better shooter and a way, way better playmaker. Like, come on. Like, I mean, how did Trey, how did Trey look against Miami? I mean, I mean what's he doing? I mean, we can point at any, anybody's worst moment if they look how bad they are, but, like, we got to look at the overall body of work. So, Trey's a great, Trey's a great player, so is Donovan. I just like Donovan better. Like, I don't know why this is, like, calling everybody so much friction, like, I would take Donovan. You can have Trey because you like Trey. So that's fine. You know what I'm saying? You can point at anybody's worst, worst stretch of games and say, look how bad they are. Trey didn't look good against my life. Right? So, like, what happened? Yeah. We're, yeah, you're talking about one series. I'm talking about 20-plus games. I'm talking about having the best lob threat in the NBA and passing to him one and a half times a game. No, 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 no. He doesn't play with Rob Williams. What are you talking about? He doesn't yeah, play with Rob Williams. Yeah, Rudy Gobert, Rudy Gobert is not a lob threat, Micah. I got, I got He's a, a mutual. He's a real lob threat. That's the NBA. I, Come I, on, I, brother. Don't let, let's not gas up one person to make your point. And, like, you're, you're being – yeah, you're, you're being a little – you're being, like – intellectually dishonest here don't do that come on now. so so like in 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 reality the main difference between donovan mitchell and trey young is 30 pounds five assists per game and probably a, a steal per game right uh trey gets more assists donovan plays heavier defense because he's larger if you look at and, the actual percentages they're the same except for free throws so like they shoot the same the issue was the style of offense they have because donovan mitchell's not a point guard he's a shooting guard it. Yeah. Like I said. So I, I get I don't get why the consternation is coming up. Like Trey is uh he's the franchise in Atlanta, and I get it. They're hoping that he leads them deep into the playoffs again. Donovan has made some playoff runs and he's had amazing playoff runs. That's my point. Donovan that one year, who were they playing that year? Was it was it the uh the Nuggets? Um, they, I, I mean, he lost to the Nuggets. He right, lost when, to the Warriors. They, they, they lost to the Nuggets, but when they lost to the Nuggets, he was in, he was insane. So I get it. Like, I'm just saying, he has that on his resume where he has shown up big in playoffs. And yes, his his latest wasn't the greatest. Um, Trey had a nice playoff run too, and his latest wasn't the greatest. So like, you can we can both point at individual things like that. I'm just saying, body of work. Donovan Mitchell was the franchise cornerstone. Utah was the best in the league. Was that just? I think they were number one seed just what uh, two a year ago, two years ago. You know what I'm two saying? Years, yeah, so, two like, years ago. Yeah, like I, you can point it. You could. I'm not trying to down. I'm not down into um, Trey Young. Trey Young's a, a, he's a, a nice player. I would prefer to build around a little bigger wing who can score. And I get it. I don't just. I'm not taking anything off Trey. Trey's his, the assist numbers look good, but we know he's a scoring guard. Um, he doesn't defend at all, and you can he can be really targeted. Uh, De- De- Donovan doesn't really defend either, but he's not targeted because of his size. Is my point. So yeah, brother, okay. come on, man. We know Donovan stinks defensively too. Yeah, like, absolutely, one hundred percent. It's like it's just a mid off on that side of the basketball. <laughs> I on. mean, the fact the fact that he said it's so weird though, because Donovan came in the league as a defender and he just kind of scrapped all that. So my point is, he has the tools and potential, while Trey has absolutely nothing. He's like a ball of a cotton ball out there. So. I'm not saying that ma- that shouldn't matter a lot, but it does matter. Yeah, I mean, but also, like, part of that, though, is the simple fact that Trey Young's, what, 5'11 on a good day? That's my point. He's a cotton ball out there. It's like, 
it, it is actual size limitations, and that's a tough thing about building around him. Like, you have to get adequate enough defenders just to, like, stay solid on that end. Which was uh, exposed uh, last year. Yeah, like, if you watch that Miami series, like, they had that dude in a torture chamber <laughs> defensively. Like, it was nasty. Not fun. So I respect. I respect that. Hey, I'm gonna. I'm about to roll, man. Thanks for having me on. It's always fun listening to you guys. You guys got a lot of great energy in the morning. Uh, whoever said coffee was was overrated. Um, you know, uh, bless your soul. <laughs> Have mercy on your soul, because coffee is like life. Um, but yeah, man, you guys tune into Dunk Tales. We got. We're gonna have a new episode dropping Thursday. My homeboy JP and me have a lot of fun doing it. Always uh, appreciate the love, uh, Chris. Thank you so much, brother. Hey, hey Snap. Before before you go, who's the um who's the uh, sponsor this week? Oh, uh, you know what? I think we're gonna start back getting into that, man. We we got away from that for a while, and you know, me and JP been really busy, but we have a lot of fun doing that. So we, I'm not gonna tell you. I'm All not right, gonna cool. tell you that. You have to tune in. So um, yeah, man, we just did a really good show talking about. Obviously, we talked about Draymond, and we talked about a little bit about Emay and Starver, and we're gonna do like a little pre preview coming up. You guys, stay tap in, man. Send me send us questions. We'll be happy to answer them and uh, appreciate it. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, look, Dunk Tales Podcast, you need to follow uh, a man with no name, Snotty Dripping and JP, the host and truth teller, dropping on Thursday. We'll have the link up here Friday morning. Uh, Snot, appreciate you, man. Hey, man, don't forget about little people when you really blow up, man, because you've, <laughs> you've been doing this for a while. You've been grinding, and it's a great show. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Uh, all right, Akil, I see your hands up. You got something like uh, you always do. I know you do. What is it this and, time? Hey, man, I got agendas to push. That's it. Nothing but agendas over here on my end, man. Um, agenda number one. How much money did Tyler Hero get last this past season? This, a what was a this lot. A hundred? Yeah, man. Um, Three million a year? Yeah, that that Jordan pull bag's gonna be huge. That's he's he's gonna get like one fifty. Uh, Jordan Pool, James Wiseman coming off your bench, looking like peak Harden Capella. Um, you know, nasty. Um, gonna be very very fun. Um, man, my Detroit Pistons also look very good at basketball right now. Man, Cade Cunningham is tough. Um, really good, really 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 good. But the tank is on. And we're tanking hardcore right now. Uh, get a Victor Wembanyama, maybe. No, we won't be bad enough for him. Yeah, but, you're not. You're not. But the best thing about this draft, though, Chris, is like, and I'm I'm pretty much in. I'm very very heavy into the draft stuff. Like one through twelve to fifteen, you can get a really 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 good player. Like Keontae George is like projected to be like nine. And he could probably be like a top five in like any other draft if he wasn't. Yeah, I I've already said if Paulo Bancaro came out this year in this yeah. draft, not top five. He's pick. like tw- he's like maybe tw- ten to fifteen. Like that's nah, a- he he, he, could, like, he would he would go he would still go in the top ten. You can't you can't yeah, like he you would can't be, train size. Yeah, it'd, it'd be he'd be a later pick in the ten for sure. That's the thing, right? Like this draft is stacked. Yeah, um, I think we talked in like there's a there's a range. I think they said six through ten. Um, yeah. And it's it's more so because they think the twins are going to go back to back. Uh, the Thompson twins are fun. Yeah, <laughs> Amen and Amer are like so fun. Uh, but I'm excited for the NBA this year in general, man. Like this is the year I think we might have the most parity in the league. Like I can't think of a year except for maybe last season, but like definitely this year where you got like legitimately 10, 12 teams. That are all trying to like make super deep playoff runs. Um, so it's gonna be like a hold on to your horses thing, man. Like we were talking about the Eastern Conference. The Eastern Conference is gonna be a dog fight in the middle of the pack. And I think the same thing for, for the West as well. Um, I got a Herb Jones agenda to push. I think he's gonna be a first team all defensive wing of the NBA this year. Like I think that kid's really, really good. Uh man, I'm I'm excited. Chris, are you a Pacers fan? You know. Okay, good. I, I don't wish that on anybody. Like, um, you, you've been coming in here for a year. <laughs> I don't know what your NBA affiliation is. I just know. He, he just said it. He's a Philly fan. Oh, yeah, you're a Philly fan. Duh. Duh, wow. you're a Philly fan. I forgot about this. You're from Indiana, but you're a Philly guy. Okay. I'm not um, even from Indiana. I live here, bro. Oh, what? Oh, 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 I, why, why? Yeah, like, man. Just, you're just... My, my mm. bad, my bad, my bad. Philly's going to be fun, too, though, man. Um... Man, this whole league is going to be good this year. Um, I'm excited, man. Who's like your sleeper teams this year, Chris? Or Snot or whoever? Like, oh, what, what? Okay, so what do you mean by sleeper is the question. Like, okay, do you mean... So, 
a team, and a lot of people have different different distances. A team that like nobody thinks could make a deep run, but you think they have a shot to make a pretty deep run. Oh, I think Cleveland can make the Eastern Conference Finals. Okay, I'm actually yeah. with that. Yeah, I I think they can if if they can get the offense together with Garland and Mitchell. Um, and and I said that like we would talk about it. Like the answer is Evan Mobley. Right. Evan Mobley takes this leap. If they actually understand that they need to put the ball more and play through Evan Mobley uh, and keep his usage percentage trending upwards and then allowing Garland and Mitchell to play off ball at times, that creates a completely different dynamic. And if they can, if, if Bickerstaff can figure that out, look out. Like if Evan Mobley becomes like the defensive uh, athletic version of DeMontis Sabonis, the league is in trouble. And and he has that ability. That's that's the thing is can he unlock it? And I don't know if Bickerstaff is going to be the correct coach for that because he's more of a defensive uh, and balanced approach. So I, I I just don't know. That's what I think. If if Mobley is what I think he can be, like Cleveland is scary good come playoff time. Yeah. Defensively, I think they're going to be really, really, really special. Um, also, this is just in. Um, my basketball coach is named the third most handsome NBA coach of 2022, according to beauty technology analyst analysis. I don't know what that okay, means. Okay, okay. But how, <laughs> how, how do you get an alert for that? I don't know. How do you even know that? Um, it's a, I'll post a tweet up top, but yeah, you man. following somebody. I need to know who you following for that tweet. I need to follow that person. Amari Sankofa. He, okay. he covers the Pistons right. on Detroit free press. Um, yeah, come on, man. We got the third most handsome coach in the NBA. Talk to me. Nice. You over here. Like, you know, say, saying you got Denzel as a coach. <laughs> 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 Denzel Washington <laughs> is my basketball coach. Exactly. Talk to me. All oh. know, no, no matter what, my head coach is in the top, what, three percentile of most handsome coaches. Y'all can't say the same. And that's it. I'll end on that. All right. Jose's up here, uh, host of 77 Spaces with Speak On It, Rolo, and Jazz, a.k.a. Scammer Sultan, the best Mavs content you can have here on Twitter Spaces. Growing is the name of the game. Uh, that's what we are all trying to do here. So I ask you humbly to please shoot him a follow and check out 77 Spaces, right? When we came here from Clubhouse, right, I, I very different ways we could have gone. And I said, like, look, the only way that matters to me is to ensure that as many people who want to chase this dream have the opportunity to chase this dream. He started it with Rolo last year, and we are here still chasing this dream. Um, 77 Spaces comes on two, three times a week. Hop in here, talk some Mavs. It's more than just Luca, Luca, Luca. It's actually detailed analysis on why Dorian Finney Smith is underrated in terms of a valuable commodity, right? It's about how Jaden Hardy can supplant Josh Green, who may just have finally found his game. But Jaden Hardy is really good about putting this little orange ball through a cylindrical hoop. Right, Jose. Good morning. How you doing? Good morning, Chris. I'm fantastic. Thanks for that opening soliloquy you just had for me. I appreciate it, and I appreciate everybody else here on stage who's been providing some great content for you know the first hour of Hoop Spaces. Um, you know, Dorian Finney Smith is underrated, unappreciated, and you know just needs to be a there needs to be a little bit more talk around his name because Dorian Finney-Smith, he came in as undrafted. He developed his game. He was defense first, and he's been able to uh, develop a three-point game as well. So that makes him extremely uh, valuable in a wings league. So put, put some respect on Dorian Finney-Smith's name. He's probably the second-best player on the Mavericks, and, you know, we just love to see his growth. And also, he's been taking a leadership role as well, telling Jason Kidd to shut up during practice to let the players communicate. And, you know, also Jason Kidd being okay with that and saying, you know what, you're right, you got it. So letting the players being able to communicate as well. 
I really like to see Dorian Finney Smith. And speaking of Jaden Hardy, like even though Jaden Hardy was a, a brick on Friday night's preseason game, if you just look at his shot release and look how he sets up every single shot, it looks like it's going in. And the only reason why he was so bad Friday night is just because his shots weren't falling. They were at the rim every single time. There was no hesitation. I absolutely love what Jaden Hardy is being able to provide, uh, whether that's off the bench or maybe held, even the starting lineup in the coming up season. And also, Josh Green had had a little bit of a, a step back. He took a little bit of a step back because he was trying to do too much and trying to facilitate, trying to create his own shot. And, oh, boy, he was hesitant Friday night. But, you know, still still ways to go. This is a long NBA season. And the, the thing with the Mavs, I feel they're a little bit deeper. And they don't necessarily need Jaden Hardy. What Jaden Hardy will provide is something that will just be able to put the, the – Topping on whatever dish you, you prefer to have at that given time and day. So I'm really happy what I'm seeing out of the Dallas Mavericks so far. And we definitely need that third ball handler. I'm not going to say Jalen Brunson is the end all be all, but we definitely need somebody to be able to set up our players and be able to create his own shot. I don't think Frank Capazzo is that guy, but if they bring him in, I mean, what can I say? He's a Dallas Maverick if he is a Dallas Maverick. Um, also, one, one thing that comes with the Mavericks is my worry about the wing depth and the ball handler. I've already said this throughout the, the summer with you, Chris, uh, when we did our interview, is that if Dorian Finney-Smith or Reggie Bullock get an injury, like, who's the backup wing? Is it Josh Green? Is it Frank Nantila? And that's my biggest concern with the Dallas Mavericks. Other than that, we're in a good place because you look at Tim Hardaway Jr., you look at Christian Wood, you look at Max Kleba, and they're coming off the bench as opposed to Dobson Berton, Dwight Powell, uh, Josh Green, Frank Nantila, some of those names. And then we have uh, Neil Pinson way at the end of the bench just providing his uh, cheerleading shit. So, overall, the Mavericks are in a good place right now, and I can't wait until Friday night against the Utah Jazz for our last preseason game. Uh, something I wanted to talk about, Chris, while I was up here is uh, the routine, uh, Redeem Team documentary. What interests me about that was, like, the NBA politics on how the NBA, you know, trying to make the game more global, assemble the Dream Team together, and then, you know, we get to 04 you have a old coach setting his old ways, not trying to play LeBron, D-Wade, Carmelo, and then you have Coach K who comes in and gives a new perspective on, you know, coaching, and all of that matters. It, it's crazy how, how all this uh, intertwines with each other, how, how much basketball is a simple concept, but you have to put all these inter- uh, keys in together and have them uh, be cohesive enough to have a winning program, a winning organization. And, man, I I just love basketball, Chris. I I love just having some of the the behind-the-scenes of, like, a Kobe and LeBron talking together and just giving their perspective of the game. Uh, I think sometimes with the quote-unquote new media, (laughs) we could get a little bit lost at what – basketball is and how it's truly represented so it's always great to have these little documentaries and I'm I'm anticipating the Elite Sanity documentary on HBO as well. Uh, Chris, have you had a chance to watch the Review Team documentary yet? No, I'm probably going to end up watching that this weekend but like I've got, I've got a history from like the Team USA perspective. Um, as opposed to the player perspective, like it, 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 it's a it's a fascinating history, uh, Team USA basketball. It's 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 it's, it's phenomenally um, in depth and political. You, you mind sharing that? <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah. So like we weren't part of FIBA like until 
66. Um, and then we had pure amateurism that, that was built up through this process. So, like, there was representatives of the basketball, the national basketball uh, coaches, the National Association of Basketball Coaches. Um, the NCAA was involved. The the high the national high school, the National Federation of High School Sports Athletic Association. Uh, the junior college, the JUCOs, the NGCAA, and all of these came together. So this didn't even consist of professional players. The entire history of U- Team USA Basketball, what became Team USA Basketball, uh, it was officially formed in the 70s. And it existed in that way. It, took, it was took control by another organization uh, right after that. And the other organization actually changed again in 78 due to federal law. Uh, Congress had passed the Amateur Sports Act, um, which limited uh, the ability for certain things to be done because it became uh, federally funded. Uh, The new organization changed their name to USA Basketball in the 80s, um, 88 or 89. And that is now what we know as Team USA Basketball. It had nothing to do with professional players. So, like, we were winning because the best players played in, in college. And they were just the best players because everybody else just wasn't as good. And then they started to get good, and we were not where we needed to be. So private entity lobbied government, government acquiesced to private entity in the back channels. The people who had built this construct were trying to keep this hundred percent pure amateurism. Um, there was a section within the government who did no longer wanted to fund it. Right. And they said, well, we'll continue to support it. If you can get outside funding, that pressure is what opened the door to allow David Stern to take advantage of the opportunity to initiate what his original plan was, which was to grow basketball, at least the NBA version of basketball, to be large enough to replace FIBA and make basketball on par uh, with soccer. There you go. Like, as best as I can summarize 90 years of history. Go ahead. Uh I appreciate that, Chris. Uh, I appreciate you taking your time to, to tell us that. You know, that, that's something I, I really didn't know. And uh, it, it just, again, it goes back to just learning some of the back history of all of this and really getting a really intricate uh, foundation with, with us fans, you know, just knowing the game and, and how it developed and where it first started. Uh, I, I had a question for Nat, but she stepped out, so I, I'll ask Danny D, and I also have a question for you, Chris. Uh, Danny D, my question to you is, uh, with this situation with Jordan Poole and Draymond Green, does this put Draymond on the trade market, or does this put Draymond in a position to request a trade? Huh, great question. Um... You know what my feeling is, is that this pushes this pushes Golden State to consider trade trading him. Um, in my opinion, I could be wrong. I could be way off on it. Um, they will probably love to keep him, but Jordan Poole's the future. You just punched money. <laughs> you know, you just punched our money. You just punched our longevity. The the people filling the seats in in, in in this expensive arena. You just punched the money. You can't do that. And he's on the downturn of his career. Um, he does bring great things to the team, but he also don't bring too much to the team. We saw that in the playoffs. We're gonna be real. He was good in the first round. And in the other two rounds, and he definitely struggled when it got to Boston because his antics didn't really work, and it caused him to get frustrated and lose his confidence somewhat. Um, so um, 
if they could trade him to somebody in the East, he now if he was if he ever if he does get traded, he's not gonna be traded to somebody in the West. He's gonna have to find his way back to the West on his own. But if I was to trade him, he gonna be traded to somebody in the East. I don't know who. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see it. I don't see a trade. Um, I know, I know. Yeah. Like there's there's been the talk about Detroit, talk about the Lakers. The issue is re- returning money. And the Warriors, if they're not going to keep Draymond, uh, they're going to have to either trade for a player that they want to pay for returning money or they're just going to want the money off the book, right? And that's the problem that Draymond's in. And it, it, it doesn't matter what happened. It was the problem he was in before the incident is that he makes 20-plus mil. He wants a big bag. Um, they're paying everybody else too. Wiseman about to come up on his contract extension deadline. Like, what are we doing? Like, this is the uh, somewhat un- unpleasantness of the business. You know, when when is the time? And well, right now, never, he made the time now. Right. He, it's never a right time because, see, they could have possibly kept Kevin Durant if he hadn't just – he Kevin Durant is an emotional man. There's nothing wrong with being emotional. I'm not saying I imagine – he's an emotional person. Let me change that. He's an emotional person. You, only so far you could push someone like that who's passive aggressive who will walk away. So they're not going to lose Jordan Poole. They're probably going to sign him uh, his extension. You won't hear about it. He's going to get back. He's, he's going to get his money uh, more than Tyler Hero. Um, but yeah, I, I think he's, how do old folks say, worn out his welcome, and this incident didn't help him. He was supposed to be on his best behavior and play better this year. Whatever personal issues he's having at home, I mean, he just got married. So I don't know. Maybe his marriage has had marital issues. Maybe his business issues. I don't know. But he brought it to work. He should have left it out there. Because I do believe it had nothing to do with Jordan Poole. I do believe whatever's going on is outside. I, I appreciate you, Danny, for answering my question. My final question for you, Chris, before I get off the stage is, all right, so we know Victor is coming from international pools, coming from France. Uh, Scoot Henderson is going to the G League at night. What does this mean in terms of the college game? Because you have the potential one and two uh, coming into the draft from a non-college organization. Um, they'll be fine. Like the the, the biggest question is more um, nil and labor dispute within the NCAA construct. So that was one of the things that a lot of people don't understand could be um, a non-expected consequence from nil is you then create an unlevel playing field for recruiting, uh, which would then be discriminatory or could be proven to be discriminatory, right? Like why is Nike signing Florida to a nil deal where every player is getting 50 K, but Nike ain't signing Prairie View A&M. Right. Or if they do sign them, they're signing him for five hundred dollars as opposed to five thousand. And and like until these nuanced conversations have a legitimate um, debate, which nobody wants, the NCAA isn't going to go anywhere. Also, like the G League Ignite is only going to take 30 players. Right. And then they only field one team. So those are the players that might try to attempt the like in the in the acceptance part might not even get on the team what happens to them you have overtime elite who's got a league i actually i think their league is great um they'll they'll (laughs) siphon up some players but you are still gonna have an uh, ncaa top 100 or top 150 player ranking and all that does is give player 17 a bump up to player seven and then so he's just gonna fill that void and the margins get shrunk. So instead of having 114 legitimate teams, you end up having like 80. So nothing, nothing big changes. Uh, we'll get BJ up here. Before we do, though, let me go ahead and reset because we're into a new hour. Thank you for hopping in and spending any part of your day here. We appreciate it. Uh, I want to give a couple of other creators who are down below uh, a shout out. We got Hoop Life in the building. Also, a hoster of NBA content spaces. If you want to make sure, uh, if you want to follow him, uh, shoot him a follow. He does a great job doing a fantasy live auction draft during the year. Uh, we have CJ, the unathletic. You can catch his pod dropping every Friday. 
Uh, make sure you shoot him a follow. Uh, also, down below, I want to give a personal shout out to Viral Nico, always supporting every member of the Hoops Faces community. Uh, new person up here on stage. Uh, the NL East is over. I would say it is because the Mets lost, and that makes us all happy. BJ, good morning. How are you? I'm good. Ado, I'm trying to see what y'all think about the East because it's stacked this year. Uh, well, I mean, it is. Can you be a little bit more specific on actually what you want? Like, who you think going to be the first seed? Where you think the Hawks going to be ranked since they got DeJounte? Collins back. All right, feel you on that. Um, right now, if you headed over and, and read some of the articles, the, the top four teams in no particular order because it's health, uh, Philly, Boston, Miami, and Milwaukee. Then you have the next three who can reach that top tier. Uh, that would be Atlanta, uh, Cleveland, and, and possibly the Toronto Raptors. Um, I say that because you still have to integrate Trey and DeJounte. John Collins kind of has to get back to form. DeAndre Hunter has to be healthy. I think Clint Capella is is on the backside, and he's going to be in a timeshare with Nyeka Okongwu, and I'm not convinced that either one of them will be able to give you 28 minutes of consistent starting ball. And then with the the, the trades you've made and the, the offseason moves you made, you're completely relying on uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich to be your sixth man, and he has not had a, a great track record of health the last two and a half seasons. Uh, if he can give you 65, 70 games and, and be on the sixth man of the year, I, I think you can push top four. I'm not expecting that. I think you fight with Cleveland uh, more so than Toronto, but for the fifth um, and six seeds. I don't – like, it's hard, man. If you guys make a trade, though, and, and get another shooter for that bench, you'd probably fare f- better, to be honest. Yeah, that's all I want to know. I just wanted to see how you felt about the Hawks. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, shoot us a follow. Also, check out uh, search on Twitter for Hawks Fan TV. He's our, our Hawks Fan creator yeah, here I'll on the Hoop Facing Note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, appreciate it, BJ. Uh, right. Mike, uh, Danny, you guys have anything you want to add in here? All right. No, no. Oh, you know, I do got one question, and I just thought this will. You you mentioned nil, and you know, all these people got nil. I'm not against children working or making money. But why is that little Bronny James boy, who was Bronny, getting an NIL? His daddy rich. He don't need no NIL. That's all. That's all that, that just bothered me. That should, I, I, anyway. Because, I, because he's his own person? He might be his own person. He got a good allowance from his daddy. I'm uh, sure. uh, uh, no, no, no. If if one player is has the ability to earn, all players have to have the ability to earn. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to have the nil program. Oh, God, you're the voice of reason in my head right now. I'll give you credit for that. He ain't the only hospital got one, though. Oh, yeah, no, nah, there's tons now. Like, they, like I, I, I mean, even local nil deals, which is really where the, the um, malfeasance is probably going to be found. Like, how many high school programs are being backfunded by, like, the local, you know, car salesman, right? Like, I... I Go go look up the story um, of what was his name? Is it Brad Dupree? He was a running back. Um, they did a thirty for thirty. He he was given a Cadillac. Yeah, it was Bud Dupree. He was so a booster came and he said, "Hey, you should go to my school." Bud Dupree said, "I like this car." The dude gave him the keys to his car and said, here you go, and then called for a ride. Like, that's what they did back in the day. This is what nil might allow today, locally. The, these national deals, they're going to be scrutinized, so they have paperwork. But, like, if you are in a high school, competitive high school, uh, you, you, you have a chance to make states, uh, you are a coach, and my actually my old baseball coach for, for high school did this. You bring in a player from out of town. He would bring in kids from Chicago uh, who were good baseball players to add them to our team so that we would make states, right? Like, it's happening now. It's just now in a vague protection because of nil. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of lawyers who, who do great uh, nil blogs and, and breakdowns. Uh, I'm not anti-nil. I'm very much pro-nil. But I'm also very much pro-regulation that needs to have nothing to do with the NCAA. 
right? If there's going to be a, a cross the board ability for these young men and women, because they need to get paid too equitably, there needs to be a independent review board that is not answerable to the NCAA. So they don't feel uh, any pressure. Right. Um, and whether it, that is uh, through arbitration is one thing, but then that means that'll allow these players to unionize, and they don't want that because if the players unionize, then the, then they're they're not going to be amateurs any longer. So like it it's a it is a huge story, which is why there was so many anti nil people in the very beginning of the nil fight, but in the end, like if you didn't do it, then you were going to have more you know um, overtime elite, more G League good night. Uh, some of these football academies, specifically in Florida and California and Texas, y'all know the ones I'm talking about, the, the ones that do just the flag football, like IMS academies and all that stuff. You, you're going to have more and more of those. And then you're going to have those instances of that fake high school team where they lost by like 100 points. And there's been fake AAU basketball teams. And then the AAU circuit said, oh, they can do it. Why can't we? And, and then the NCAA disappears and we're back in the wild, wild west, back in the times where it didn't really matter and universities were able to do whatever they want. And, and that's what we don't want, at least in terms of athletics. Long, long answer. Hope that helped. Was that good for you? Yeah, that's a long answer, but it, could, it helped. All right. <laughs> you see my encyclopedia. Cool. Uh, all right, Micah, you got any question you want to ask since I'm, I'm answering right now? If you got a question down below, I haven't gotten into the chat box yet. I'm going to go in there uh, now, though, to see if anybody has a question. If you got it, go ahead and put it up there. We'll go ahead and answer it. Uh, if you're looking for a, a person to follow who just loves all sports, I'm going to uh, shout out my other namesake, Real Chris Says. Uh, if you like connecting with people on Twitter, that's what he's here for. That's what he does. Shoot him a follow. Uh, also, down below, I want to give a shout out to our very own show killer, uh, Bankai, who's probably going ecstatic because the Knicks have looked good this preseason. And I want to make sure he knows that I know I've been trying to tell people don't sleep on the Knicks. Like, it's just not sexy to you, but the Knicks are going to be fine. They're going to be good. They're going to be competitive. They're going to surprise some people. Like, I'm, I'm really actually pleasantly surprised, not on the Jalen Brunson thing and everything, but the development of the bench unit, I, I think, is going to be fine. They're going to be good, right? Better than last year. Do not let the record reflect that. Like, the record is going to be what it is. That's the testament to what BJ was saying. The East is stacked. But the Knicks got better. They still one player away, though. Uh, all right, there we go. Um, down below in the chat box, I want to say what's up to TJ. He always comes through. Uh, and Justin Padden, uh, the, routine, uh, the Redeem Team doc is really good. A lot of stuff I didn't know and the build of the team and the dynamics and the part with Kobe, of course, my favorite. Um, and I'm assuming you're talking about the part where Kobe's saying he's going to run through Paul Gasol and people are saying, oh, no, that ain't going to happen. And then Kobe said, you know, F him. Um, Kobe was, Kobe was cold, yo. That's why they say Mamba mentality. Like that, that, um, Slam Magazine has a tribute, uh, episode, uh, uh, issue, um, for Kobe. You should read it. Uh, in there, there's a story, um, that essentially tells how Kobe transferred the, the Mamba mentality from an ideology of how to play basketball to how to succeed in life. And it's literally a quote and it was an answer to a question that wasn't even about it that's how deep that kobe was and i think a lot of times we just give him credit for being a really good basketball player uh as opposed to being what would be considered a basketball philosopher uh as he aged and progressed in life and career he he saw the game more as a, a way of life uh very similarly to how um a practitioner of Kung Fu understands that Kung Fu is the antithesis of negativity, but of positivity. Kobe was able to actually use that philosophy and mindset in basketball. It's phenomenal. Uh, all right. Uh, let me get you guys up here. There's a couple of hands. Well, now there's only one hand up, so we'll bring him up here. Um, we got some basketball to talk about for the rest of the week. I'm going to give you the schedule for tonight. There are five games. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, five games. Oklahoma City at Detroit, that's at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock on NBA TV. Memphis at Orlando, that's a very important game to watch. 
Uh, and it's not because of Memphis. It's because of Orlando. I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks will be in Chicago at 8 p.m. Milwaukee has not won this preseason. Please do not be alarmed. They have not had Chris Middleton. Uh, they also haven't had three of their bench players play because they're not healthy. San Antonio and Utah, the Tank Olympics start 9 p.m. Don't worry. You won't have to watch it unless you have league pass. Portland and Golden State closes out tonight at 10 p.m. on NBA TV. Um, Portland is going to be an interesting team. The question is, will they have enough to, to compete and get back to where they kind of fell from grace? A lot of people said they made a lot of great changes, and then I looked at it, and they still look the same. Two smaller guards who love to shoot around Yusuf Nurkic and a whole bunch of players. Uh, so we'll see what Portland will be able to do against Golden State. Uh, so I bring up the Memphis and Orlando talk. Uh, the reason why is Paolo Bancaro. Um, he's, he's going to be it in Orlando, except for the fact that I don't think he's the best big in Orlando. I think the best big in Orlando right now is Wendell Carter Jr. And when I watch them both play, they play the same position. And, and I think the difference is Paolo just has better range and a smoother release. And I think that's going to end up causing some problems because if you look at how Paolo and Wendell Carter Jr. play, that doesn't really necessarily work well with the set of guards that they have. Then on top of that, the set of guards that they have are all injured again. Ah, I feel so bad. Markel Fultz, out, extended time. Jalen Suggs, out again. Gary Harris, out. They are back down to Cole Anthony and R.J. Hampton as their guards. And as long as that happens, nothing good will happen in Orlando. But again, this is important because if Paolo can be that guy, we're going to start seeing it now because they don't have anybody else to be that guy. If he can be that point forward that we all thought Chris Webber was going to be, whom he's compared to, now's the time to see if he can do it. I do want to shout out one player, though, who I'm a huge fan of. Franz Wagner, I believe, is the truth in terms of being a two-way uh, stretch three who's also going to be able to put the ball on the floor. All right, up on stage, also, we have Willie Chan and CJ, the unathletic. Uh, we will go to CJ first. CJ, good morning. How you doing? I'm doing good, Chris. Um, it's good to see everybody. Uh, actually agree with you on the Orlando thing, Chris. I think it's weird. Um, when they won the number one overall pick, or uh, the number two, my fault. Um, no, they had the number one. Oh, it was the number one. Okay, yeah. So, like, when they had the number one pick, like, I knew that they were just going to be moving guys. Like, there were rumors immediately that Mobamba, they were just going to let him leave and things of that nature. And so, like, I don't know. They have like this weird like collection of talent at each position, but like they all pretty much play the same way. And like to me, like it just it doesn't make sense. And I'm and I'm waiting for Orlando to kind of just like make that change so that they can kind of balance out their roster so that it's not just like repetition on repetition. Cause like like to me, Paolo, Jonathan Isaac you know, uh, Wendell Carter Jr., Mo Bamba, like, all those guys can't be on the same roster. It just doesn't make sense basketball-wise. And then, like, it does suck that they have a lot of their guards injured, but they even have to make a decision there. Like, at least one or two of those guys are going to have to be moved at some point. Like, and I don't know if Orlando is really going to not tank, per se, but if they're going to be willing to have such a bad season that they're put into the top five for the next draft and then be literally in that same position again because like the guys that are probably going to be up there like are not going to be much different from the guys they already have on their roster like it, outside of obviously Victor Wimbenyama but I don't think they're going to be that bad to get Vic so it's like I I don't understand what their plan is like I I, I don't even understand what they're trying to create on this roster because like I thought they were trying to do like a pseudo Toronto thing where they get a bunch of guys with length. But even Toronto, there's like some difference between those players that it meshes still. Whereas with Orlando, like it just, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. I don't think they're tanking. Um, that would require them to be able to, to 
have a long protracted strategy. And one thing, one thing I've learned about the Devos family business is that they they don't they don't do that. They 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 find a, they they find one stick and they stick to it. If you look at what Amway's done for the entirety of its existence, that's who they are. So like what they have is literally just a whole bunch of things in their mind. And so they don't pay attention. So then they hire people whom people tell them they should hire. And the difference is they're not, well, not any longer. They've, they've gotten a couple. Uh, they used to not be real basketball people, but they were on the basketball periphery. So they would hire them, and then they would hire the coach who was a coach who was good a long time ago, but kind of had the game passing by. And, and then they lucked into Dwight Howard, and then that changed everything because that's how good Dwight Howard was. But the magic still never changed. They have never changed. They are still who they are. It's just they don't have that player. And that's why I say tonight's game, to just see how good Paulo Bancaro could be, it's more important for tonight for Orlando, even if they lose, going up against Memphis. Because, again, no Markel Fultz, no Jalen Suggs, no Gary Harris. You're left with Cole Anthony, right? You're left with R.J. Hampton, and that's it. Like, that's not good looks. So if you draft Paolo number one and you, you hype him up saying he's going to be this Chris Webber point forward, he ain't going to have a better time than today to make mistakes. So give him the ball. Let him run point the whole game. So, so what you're saying is, Chris, is that the magic may not ever change until the DeVos family sells the team? I would ask Stephen Cameron. Uh, he was in here a little bit earlier, but I, that's what I would say. I, I just don't have faith in the ownership group. They have never done anything to just say, mm, I trust them. Real real quick side note too, Chris, because um, you know I'm a Warriors fan, and so I've been I've been literally been thrown through the meat grinder with the whole Draymond pull situation. And um, I'm not going to speak my piece on how I feel about the situation because I'm not trying to incite nothing. And I don't feel like arguing with nobody this morning. But, um, man, you know, uh, the situation is insane. And um, I'm just of the mindset right now. I just I really hope that whenever they do find out who made the league, that that gets handled uh, the with the strongest hand possible. Because um, to me, that's that's my bigger issue right now. But that's just me. Yeah, see, so... When the when 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 the incident happened and first broke, right? Like talking to a whole bunch of people almost immediately, it was an in-house situation, and it, everything had been covered, and no one was expecting for a leak, and then the leak came out. So like we can all sit here and we can try to speculate who leaked. Was it this side? Was it that side? And and what I will tell you is just look at the video. If you've ever been to an arena and, and you've ever paid attention to the layout of the floor, you can figure out where the video is being shot, right? Like you, you can tell, you know, the, the only four locations that it could possibly be. And then, you know, you can figure out with your own phone zoom about where on the map it is. And if you know basketball, if you know arena operations, you know exactly the, the people who it could be. So, like, that's the problem is I think they know, but, like, because, again, they're trying to keep it in-house, we won't ever know what oh, happens. No. I, I honestly don't want to know who it is specifically. I just oh, want to well, know the punishment. Don't. Yeah, I just want to know yeah. the punishment. But, like, my thing is, though, Chris, is that, like, I, I was telling people that I believe that whoever leaked it recorded it, like, it wasn't from the original source. It was from somebody filming it on something else because, like, just just from the quality of video and then also the fact that, like... Well, I, 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 I have an iPhone 12, and sometimes I take pictures and it looks like it's from the 1980s. Yeah, so, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it got... It had, like, it was recorded off of something else. And right. so, like, that's my thought process with that. And, you know, like, I'm... Like I'm, I'm not so entrenched in wanting to know the person specifically as much as the punishment because my whole thing at the end of the day is like, there's also speculation on how much that person got paid because people are like, well, 
why would you sacrifice, you know, the opportunity to work for the Warriors for, you know, whatever whatever money it was given? Because I know somebody said the original amount that was that was thrown out there was like 120000 And then a lot of people said, no, nah, it was nowhere near that. It was more in the millions. And I'm like... No, 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 no. Look, the... The only payment that was ever disclosed, and, and even then, it's only been corroborated by former TMZ employees, was Jay-Z and Solange Knowles. And that went for a quarter of a million. Draymond ain't getting no million-dollar payment. Like uh, Whatever happened at the Golden State Warriors ain't getting above Jay-Z. Like, that's just... That's just what it is. So, like, if you go and look at all the articles... That's the highest. And you see a lot more down in the single thousands to okay. maybe 20K, right? So, like, that's, that's it. Like, there's no 250K. Now the rumor is, like, 120. Like, the punishment yeah, that's the, that's is the you're fired. I heard was 120. Yeah. The, the, the punishment is you're fired. You're likely not going to get a job in the NBA or a professional sports uh, league. But you, if it's true, you're 120k in. You got 120k. So like, you don't think they'll sue? For what? What are they gonna know. do? I, like, I, I don't know. Uh, you gonna try to uh, uh, get damages for for what? Like, if it's not an employee, what are you gonna sue them for? If anything, if it's not an employee who did it, you got to now fire more people. Because then how did this unemployed, unemployed dude get in there, get access to or record from? So now it's more than one people, and then that creates a conspiracy and a whole bunch of other things. Like, it, it's stupid. It's, it's, it's absolutely stupid. It should have never happened. And, and not because of, you know, it being recorded. It should have never happened because there shouldn't have been the ability for that to happen. Yeah. And, and, and that's why Draymond's at fault. And that's why Draymond left. I, I feel it. I, I, like I said, I'm not. I'm not gonna give my thoughts on it. I've done it several times, and I'm exhausted from arguing with people, so I'm not gonna do it. But yeah, the other we thing too. Like, um, this isn't the first leak, too. Like, and I think that's another thing that people haven't realized. Like, the Warriors have actually had an issue with like news getting leaked out that they wanted to keep in house, and I'm curious if this is the same person leaking out all this stuff or is it multiple people and granted like with some of this stuff like nobody can really like nothing can be done about it like for example the whole Kerr bring up brought up the whole Wiggins vaccination thing like there's nothing that can really be done about that because it's just information it's not like you know nothing I guess you could say proprietary that they, they leaked out so like that's not the issue but like they've been having people leak out stuff for a while now. And I think they may have to seriously reconsider a whole lot of stuff like they, cause yeah, every team has stuff that leaks out every day. Like part of the issue is we live in a world where there's instant information. And if we live in a world where there's instant information, there's going to be a desire for instant information and that's the instant gratification. Right. And so we've built a, a, a social media society that will tear you down to, if you do it, but man, we really want you to do it. We just don't <laughs> say it out loud, but that's, that's the correct. truth. Um, let me get JF in here, CJ. Uh, and then we'll go to Bangkok. Uh, JF, good morning. How you doing? What's good? Kurt? Can you hear me or do I need to change? Yeah, I got you. All right, cool. So, are, are you are you here to to uh, preach the truth of Nikola Jovic, uh, Jamal Cain, and Haywood Heisner, sir? Listen, I got a comp for you. I got a comp for you with Jamal Cain, Chris. You know, I'm looking at the game last night, and it's hard for me to get a comp for Jovic, but I was able to get a comp for uh, Jamal Cain. I think he's a baby LO. I think his size and the way he handles the ball and plays defense. And the way he's able to create his own offense is exactly what I used to see Elo do in a number seven heat jersey. I mean, um, I think the dude has already played himself into um, some minutes this year, maybe about 10 minutes. Uh, he, he, he looks like he's doing his thing. And if you guys haven't seen Jamal Cain, trust me, 
me and Chris, not even two weeks ago, we're talking about Darius Day, and he's not even with the Heat no more. Like, this is how quick the Heat move on from players who, you know, they show that they're willing to, to start now or they're not. They still need some more time. That's why I always praise the Miami Heat, like, G League development and however they – and their 10 contract development because if you look at those, those have been our best successful, you know, players that helped us um, besides big star names. I mean, look at Matt Struess last night. The man did his thing. I love him that he's such a, a big, tall guard um, that can shoot as well. He can elevate over others. Um, but Nikola Jovic, uh, I'm trying to tell you, Chris, this guy was the best European player that wasn't in the NBA last um, last year. And it's for a reason. The man's length and in his position, this is what this is what Ben Simmons was supposed to be. You get what I'm saying, Chris? And that's exactly what Nikola Jovic is going to show, that he can be that tall guard that you need him to be, or the tall three or four, and he's still going to be able to get his shot off and play some type of defense. I know his body structure isn't there, but it's not like a Chet Holmgren, and he will be able to grow. We forget the man just took his uh, high school finals, what, a week ago? So he's still a very, very young player, and, I, man, I can't say enough about him. But to be honest, Chris, um, I came here to – tell you today that the Draymond Cocktail store is having a fire sale. They got these new suits called Pool of Red. So if you want to go check that out, you can definitely check that out. Um, again, this is where he leads um, when, it, when it comes to coattails and selling suits. Because um, at the end of the day, you know, there's a lot of other people that can do what Draymond does, like Kaminga, Wiseman. And to be honest with you, Chris, this is an excellent start to the season. Um, starting off with some Draymond slander, some Draymond news, some Draymond getting kicked off the team, man. Man, it's just like French fries all over the place with coleslaw, huh, Chris? Well, not French fries. <laughs> um, gosh, they're so bad, man. Chris, there's a couple French fries I might hate. Is, is potato wedges considered a French fry? It is. Okay, all right. I it is. Some potato wedges last night, wasn't it? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, sometimes you have to slum it, you know? I feel for you. Chris, you just aren't a fan of potatoes, like is that? No, I love I I love potatoes if they're done properly, but like fish fries aren't done properly, like they're they're bad. Well, you know, you know what else is bad? Uh, The situation with Draymond, Chris. And to be honest with you, I'm (laughs) glad that you know he's not on the team no more. We can actually focus on some real basketball instead of all this Real Housewives of NBA drama that Draymond is starring in. Because so 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 again, there is no drama. Like, there's zero drama. It really is. There's zero drama. If there's no drama, then why'd he leave the team? Be- well, because he was he's showing attrition. Like, are you not supposed to be contrite? Are you not supposed to give space when you aired egregiously? What are, you, what are we doing, JF? You're not going to get me with these big vocabulary words, all right? If somebody punched me in my face like that, look, I'm going right back at him until hey, hit mama feel it. Oh, right, so, that, so, again... Like, you missed the nap part, and anybody who missed nap earlier this morning, hop on YouTube. Uh, after the show, I, I get it over there, and, and you're going to listen to it. He had no ability to go back at him. It was, it was one, two, done. Yeah, Chris, that, that, that's embarrassing. No, it's because the other teammates ste- that were around there and coaches stepped in. There wasn't an allowance for any continuation. Can I, that's uh, the question, problem. Chris? Can I ask you a question, Chris? Yeah. If, some, if, if you're if you're on a team, right? It's supposed to be your brotherhood, your family, your safe zone, and you get punched like that, you're not gonna want revenge, Chris. It's but, not. It's not about wanting revenge. It's about what you said in terms of drama. Like we're only talking about this because some individual selfish person put a video out. Like if that video isn't linked, we're not talking about it because it's handled internally. Just like I said yesterday, we're talking about this Draymond Green Jordan Poole fight. We're not talking about the other fight that happened on another team because it didn't leak. But like, Chris, like can we can like I like I understand everybody loves to bring up the whole brotherhood thing and all that, but like can we just dispel the notion that just because you use the word brotherhood that everything is always supposed to be all good? Like, bro, like for those of us who have siblings, especially brothers, brothers fight. Like, this isn't nothing new. Like, and it, to your point, Chris, like, there is no drama. And the fact of the matter is, I believe it was Iman Shumpert who just recently put out on a podcast that he got into a fist fight with J.R. Smith. Did nobody know about that, though, until Iman Shumpert said something. 
and he did it at a practice. So, like, the only reason why this, again, is as bad as it is is because it got leaked. And, 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 and please understand, drama and toxic masculinity are not the same thing. Was there toxic masculinity? Absolutely. Was there drama? It ended the moment Draymond Green, like not even four hours later, called Steph, talked to Steph, apologized to Steph, apologized to Myers, apologized to the ownership group, apologized to his teammates, and then came back the next morning, apologized in person, face-to-face to everybody, then got in front of the media, apologized again and again and again. Like, there's no drama except for the audience who's still egging this on, right? Like, he moved himself from the team. He's going to get suspended. He's going to get fined. He admitted error, and he said, I was wrong. I understand that I now need to give space. Like, we should be not commending the response, but we should at least highlight, like, that's the way you're supposed to handle when you screw up. Right? Like, not, let's not do o- that. Not only that, Chris, it's, it's also the fact that he also brings up the fact that he's he brought in what's been going on at home or in his personal yeah, life yeah, to, see, I, to practice. No. And I respect him for bringing that up to, to heighten how wrong he is and then also let it be known, like, he's got other stuff going on. Well, like, well, it, well like, yeah, that's that's great, but that also is a defensive tactic from a PR standpoint, right? Like, don't go on that route. Just go on the action, right? Go on the action of contrition, not the words of contrition. So him bringing the same is, is what we call an equivocation. And whether it is true or not, it, it, doesn't re, it doesn't have anything to do with responsibility. And, and that's the problem. Because they will say, oh, but it was because of this. Nah, it's because of the physical action. And, and, like, I don't want us to lose sight. Let JF come back, and then we got Michael with his hands up. We got to go to Bankai. We got Scott, AK, nothing but heat. Willie Chone is back up here. We just got to keep it moving because I got about eight more minutes, uh, uh, and I want to make sure we give everybody a chance, CJ. Appreciate it. Uh, JF, go ahead and reply, your last reply, because we've got plenty more to, to move on to. Yeah, Chris, um, just make sure you go ahead and pick up your uh, blood red, uh, your pool of red tie color um, or socks, whatever we like from the Draymond Coattail store. Um, I think that he's going to close down and go ahead and move to L.A. Um, and go be with his uh, whatever you want to call him. But at the end of the day, uh, Nikola Jovic is him. The the agenda has started, Chris. Um, and I do see the Jamal Cain agenda about to start because he's averaging 15 points out of ease, Chris, with about what, 20, uh, 16 to 24 minutes. So keep on the lookout for Jamal Cain. That's what I got, Chris. Appreciate you. Um, Nikola Jovic's comparison is Tony Kukoc. You're welcome. I didn't like that one. That's that's the, well, he's gonna probably be better than Tony Kukoc, but still, he's he's six ten, two hundred. Um, he moves like him, he shoots like him. Yeah, there you go, Tony Kukoc. So the Jamal Cain and LL comparison is that. I, I I I'll have to look at it. Jamal's having success because he's doing all the small things. He's also having success because nobody knew who he was. Got you. You know, Appreciate like you. yeah. No problem, JF. Uh, Micah, get in here. Your last take, and we're going to go down to Willie. Then we got three speak, four speakers now who have yet to speak. Uh, bon Kai, Jay the Wakandan, Scott, a.k.a. Nothing But Heat, and Dip Horace. Micah, final take of the day. Yo, to act like Draymond is just some replaceable bum is beyond wild. <laughs> like, there ain't that many people. Like, really, how many people in the NBA can guard one through five. You're not just replacing that overnight. Not looking at box scores, but how he actually impacts the game. And it's different. Like, all you got to do, go go back and watch some of those Warriors games when he is injured. Tell me they look like the same team. So it just acts like he's some kind of bum because there's an issue or a situation. Hell, if that's what y'all think, hey, hey, we'll take them. We got you, Dobbins, Bertans, and THJ. Math works. There you go. If you think he's just some replaceable bum, we'll gladly take him. There you well, go. The, the, the math, unfortunately, doesn't work, Micah. Uh, that would be $32 million. Um, Draymond makes like 25. 
uh, and and that would add to the tax bill that the Warriors would have to pay. Like the math don't work. It works in terms of meeting the fifteen percent. Actually, I don't even think it meets the fifteen percent. Um, yeah, you're like at eighteen. So like you you would have to get a second player returning back at two point three mil uh, from Golden State. So close, but there you go. Sorry. Besides, Draymond's going to go to L.A. <laughs> Willie, uh, appreciate you. What you got? Good morning. How y'all doing, man? Um, I just wanted to ask a question. How y'all feel about Brooklyn? I like Brooklyn. Um, the question is, does Brooklyn like themselves? Um, if if they stay healthy and get 65 games, I got them at 50 wins. Right? So if the big three that they got get 65 games, I got them at 50 wins. I agree. I agree on the dream on ground drama. I appreciate y'all for letting me up here. Yeah, no doubt. Shoot a follow and come back. Uh, we got plenty of net spaces with uh, Nest Kingdom AJ, uh, Saint from Nets Kingdom. We got Malika Walker, like tons of Nets fans. All right. I see Ashley Baker in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, what's up, Ash? How you doing? Uh, check her out. Shoot her a follow. She hosts space here about nothing but sports. That's the podcast, too. It's dope. Should check her out. Support our support our women who talk sports because you know what? If we don't, not very many people do. Uh, Dip, what's up, man? Been a minute. How you doing? What's up, brother? Thanks everybody for having me up here. I just wanted to like talk about the Warriors organization, and I feel like the talk kind of been that it's a bad thing for the organization, but I mean this is kind of cynical, but it's somewhat good for them because now now they have another excuse to maybe pay Draymond Green less money and keep the team together. And it almost helps them because I think now the value is already fluctuating. It's lower to other teams. And now maybe it gives them a better chance of keeping the game together, ironically. Uh, You know, I'll I'll hold off. I got to see him come back. I honestly... Don't think this is a positive or a negative at all. And I think Bob Myers once again proved, you know, how to handle a situation um, as opposed to how situation was handled in Boston uh, or how. Yeah, there's other situations that were handled worse. Um, the, the issue I think that we're going to have is really more does Draymond want to come back? And I think in the end of it, he doesn't. And it, it has nothing to do with any personal relationship. I think this has to do. Uh, with Draymond as an individual person growing beyond the state that he currently exists. It's called evolution, and I think this sometimes evolution is gradual, and then sometimes life just slaps you in the face and says change, and I think that's what happened. Like, Do you think there's like another team that's a Draymond suitor for oh, there's 30 like, million? There's a, there's a, there, well, I don't well, think he's going to get price? 30. I don't think he's going to get 30, oh, but there's, okay. there's like exactly. five teams that I can name that would pay him 20. Yeah, I think a lot of teams would pay him twenty, but if he's looking to get a raise, I just don't. I, I don't necessarily see the team that would give him a raise. Where I see the Warriors, maybe like, yeah, we'll we'll bump you a little bit, just because uh, it doesn't really affect them. Only the luxury tax, the way. Well, they they could they could they could write it where the first year's thirty and the second year's twenty. Like they could do that. I could see that happening. Um, but no, like we're 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 in we're in a transitional period in the NBA. We're not admitting it. A lot of people don't understand uh, what I mean by that. I've been trying to talk about it in the offseason. I know Jay, the kind of tech support, understands because he's been in the space when I've talked about it. Like, Steph, KD, and LeBron. And it's really just Steph and LeBron with with KD as a, a singular, isolated experience in this era. There's nobody after that. Everybody else is just really, really effing good. But those three are the faces of this current iteration and and, and era, right? So when we look at what happened with Jordan, it wasn't just Jordan. Like, he had contemporaries. It's just he beat all of his contemporaries. So we don't view them as contemporaries because we view him as the greatest. Uh, But it's the same thing. So after that, who would you have? Shaq, Kobe, right? But then you had these intermittent years. We had Dirk win one before LeBron. Well, we just had Giannis win one, right, before Steph got his fourth. 
Like Giannis is arguably the best player on the planet, but is anybody here convinced he's going to win another chip? And and a lot of that is because the league switched over. Giannis might be the best player. He's no longer going to be the most dominant because we got younger players, more athletic, who are also hungrier. The teams who are down below Milwaukee on his ascendancy have caught up, right? That's how the league works when it transitions from one era to the next. And a lot of people are saying, oh, we got to have all this parity. It's not necessarily that we're having parity. We're regressing to a mean, and the mean is competition. And, and that's also another sign at, of an end of an era. It becomes more competitive because you're jockeying for position to be in the lead for the next era. And right now, it looks like San Antonio's and Oklahoma City's ahead of the game because <laughs> they're going to get victor one way or the other. Um, appreciate it, Dip. Uh, look forward to getting you up here more often in the season, man. Thanks, brother. I'm going to step down now. All right. Uh, we will go next to um, Bonkai because he's been waiting the longest. Uh, the show killer, ladies and gentlemen. Knicks fan du jour. Shoot him a follow. Talk Knicks. That's what he does. Uh, he was shocked. I saw, I saw the shock face that I said people need to not look at the record for the Knicks, but the Knicks got better. Like, they just plain got better. You don't like it. You're just going to have to accept it. But the Knicks fans are going to have to accept that they might have gotten better and still won't have a better record. Bonkai, good morning. How you doing? Good morning, Chris. What's up, everybody? I was shocked because normally I don't hear much people say uh, nice things about the Knicks. Uh, but you're a constant, though. You've never really said anything that's that terrible. You always said... You've have, always had decent praise. You love RJ. You always said he was gonna get the, the he was gonna get paid, and sure enough, he got paid. Um, expecting big things this season, but I have three questions. Um, do you think this will be Chris Paul's last season, uh, or maybe or maybe next year? Uh, how come the NBA is starting on the 19th? I can remember, I thought they used to start on the 31st or the 30th. Is there a specific reason why it got moved to the 19th? Uh, not that I'm complaining. I'm just curious about that. And there was one last question, and I swear on my life, now I can't remember it. But if I remember it, I'll shoot it up. Uh, the the schedule was changed at uh, the request of TNT, is, from, is what I understand. Uh, combination with holiday scheduling, but it was more of a TNT thing. I don't have anything beyond that. Cause like I, I, I mean, even though there's some TNT people that listen, like they don't ever reach out and talk. <laughs> I wish they would. It would be dope. Um, but I think it was more of scheduling for for the network show. Okay, That's, that answers it. Oh. Uh, Chris Paul? Uh, yeah. No, no, he no. he. Not, not in what, no, he wants the money. Uh, I think next season will be his last season. He's got non guaranteed 30 mil uh, in 2024. Um, the 30 that he's going to get next season, partially guaranteed. Like it's only guaranteed for like half of it. So if he only, if he retires, like he only gets 15, right? But if he shows up, he gets the full 30. So, like, what are you going to do? You gonna show up and get the full paycheck, or you gonna retire and get half? Like, yeah. Also, is somebody gonna pick up Carmelo? Like, because I, I thought he was gonna go to the Celtics for a second there with the in injury to Gallinari, but they ended up picking up Blake Griffin. So now, I don't really know what team he's being linked to or who's trying to pick him up. But to be honest, I find it a bit a bit disrespectful that he's not on an, on an NBA team right now especially considering that it's not the same mellow as years prior where people used to say, well, he, he always wants to start. He's not going to take a different role. He's not going to come off the bench. Mello is willing to come off the bench. He's willing to, you know, be a mentor. I still think he got, he has some, some good game left in him. Sure. Not as, you know, as the mellow he used to be, but I still think he can be very valuable to an NBA team right now, especially a playoff team, how come he's not signed yet? Um, I I heard the reason why they signed Blake Griffin was Robert Williams' injury. Uh, they needed a bigger body. Um, otherwise, he probably would be a Celtic. Um, I would say that the other two teams that would take a run at him 
uh, Brooklyn uh, could look at him and Philly could look at him. That I, I'm in fact, actually, if, if I'm Philly, I'm I probably signing him. I'm not lying, I'm probably signing him if I'm Philadelphia. If you look at Philadelphia's bench, and I and I'm a Philly fan, I, I, I like a lot of Philly fans don't like me. You're going to rely on um, Korkmaz and George Niang, yet neither are well, especially Korkmaz are consistent shooters, but neither really have the ability to explain an instance that another player might not understand. Um, and, and Carmelo has that, and that's what we call mentorship. Uh, there's been talk that he could go to New York. That just ain't going to happen. Uh, Jay the Wakandan is down below. Um, looks like he might be having tech. I'm going to try to get him up here. Um, so, yeah. yeah I, 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 go ahead. I, my bad, Chris. Uh, yeah, I don't think as much as I would love that, and a lot of other Knicks fans will love it too as well, I just don't think he'll come to New York just because – you already got Randall starting. You already got Obi fighting for minutes. That's like a everyday thing. Like, oh, when is Obi going to get his minutes? Can Obi start? Oh, we're sick of Randall. Other people are okay with Randall. So you throw in Carmelo in there. That's just another monkey wrench at the power forward slot. Um, even small forward because we already got Grimes and you got Cam. and Constant bickering between fans because of that. So I think adding Carmelo would just throw things out of loop as well in there. Yeah, and and then also, to be honest, is he did great in, in Los Angeles, but he did great simply for the fact that the one thing he does, the Lakers needed, and they were able to allow him to do it. Some of these teams, he wouldn't be able to succeed the way he did last season. It's just that. It's just the truth. Um can he can he come in and be like Rudy Gay, give you eight to ten and good mentorship? Absolutely, but it's only a handful of teams. And I'll say this: if Julius Randle wasn't on the Knicks, I think Melo's a Nick. Yeah, I I, I agree with you. I, I think they would scoop him up quick. Uh, who knows though? I mean, if the season you know doesn't go very well by say. The trade trade deadline. I'm not saying that Melo's going to be on sign until then because he'll probably be signed be- way before. But if somehow there's some weird chance, and the Knicks just say, "Hey, like, we got to move on from Randall. Let's make let's say Obi the starting power forward from going forward," uh, and Melo's still there by some rare chance, I-, I think they would sign him. To be honest. All right. Yeah, no, I think so, too. Uh, appreciate it, Bonkai. What do you got coming up here this year, man? You going to do some spaces? You, get, you got the, the podcast? You working the phones? What you got? Uh, still working with the, the, the phones for Knicks Fan TV and just trying to find something to do right now. I mean, there's a lot of different things still going with Off the Ball Network. Trying to, they, they put out a lot of shows. Uh, we might have a Knicks preview uh, live coming out right before the season starts. So just working on that. All right. Uh, cool. It's good to hear from you, man. Look forward to seeing you in, in season two. Thank you, Chris. You too. Absolutely. Jay, what's up? The the Memphis Lakers and Los Angeles Grizzlies fan has arrived. <laughs> what's going on, Chris, man? Great show as always. Um I just I just wanted to remind the room that the two pieces that I want the I wanted the Grizzlies to pick up during the draft was um Nikola Jokic and Tari Eason. And neither one of those things happened. And uh, I, I'm i hopeful for my Grizzlies. But I'm looking at them, and I look at these preseason games, and, and yes, they have shooting, but the rebounding looks like it's going to be an issue until um, Tripp gets back. Uh, I think a lot of people are counting out um, Santi Aldama. Um, I, I oh, no 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 I yeah. I think Santi's doing well I I, I think Santi's going to give us really good minutes I don't think we're going to miss trip as far as wins and losses as much as people think we are it's just that I think the the team is going to not be able to take advantage of the new transition rule as much as we would like because we're going to have to gang rebound until trip gets back. So, but I am interested to see how young teams deal with the new transition rule. 
right? Because um, I know the Grizzlies are going to benefit a lot. I think the Rockets are going to benefit a lot. Um, and then you have the teams on the other end of the spectrum. Um, and this is not a shot, but, like, the Knicks were, like, one of the slowest or the slowest-paced team in the league. And so I'm wondering what the season's going to look like with teams like the Nets, who are not going to really run, the Knicks are not going to really run. How is that going to play off, play across the board? Because is that going to lead to the extra three points that Sacramento needs a game for them to be a play-in team? So that's what I'm kind of looking forward to this season. Um, I, I tell you what, I think the fact that nobody is talking about Sacramento is a good sign for Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> Um, look, DeMont, they, they, they drafted Tyrese Halliburton. They did. And that was the sign that, hey, De'Aaron Fox is putting up stuff, but, you know, maybe there's a better option. Uh, maybe we should go in a different direction. And, and then uh, every team in the West seemingly, except for the, well, even the Golden State Warriors have some injuries, seemingly got hurt. Portland got hurt, Houston got hurt, and they were already going to be bad. Oklahoma City got hurt, they were already going to be bad. And then, like, Sacramento's just sitting there. And they're like, oh, we can make the playoffs. And they're like, let's throw away the 28th consecutive rebuilding plan. Let's go ahead and go all in. And they traded for DeMontis Sabonis. And, like, I'm sitting here, and I'm like, I love DeMontis Sabonis. Uh, I like De'Aaron Fox, but I don't see how this is gonna work. <laughs> they're, they're not necessarily the 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 power forward center uh, combo, uh, power forward center and point guard combo you, you you think would be effective in this NBA because Sabonis doesn't have a history of spreading the floor, and De'Aaron Fox doesn't have a history of spreading the floor. And like you pack the paint and you, you think you take it away, but it worked. And I think what's going to happen is you're going to see the floor raise for Sacramento because defensively Mike Brown is going to have them better. And I think that's going to account for maybe a point or even a point and a half per game. So if you get a point or a point and a half from your defense, like then they're only responsible to make an extra point and a half or two. And then that would put them in the uh, 8, 9, 10 range, right? Seeds 8, 9, and 10. So, like, it is wholeheartedly possible that Sacramento goes into the last two weeks of the season looking down at Portland, uh, looking down maybe at the Lakers if they're not healthy, with a two-game lead for the last spot in the play-in. And, like, I say that, and then everybody's eyes roll because they're the Sacramento Kings. And I'm trying to say, like, they're no longer... Those kings, Vivek Randive has finally understood that he is a bad owner and like that is wounding his pride and he's trying to learn to be a good owner and he's doing a decent job. And I think we'll see Mike Brown finally be the guy to bring stability to sack. I just don't see them being hyper competitive with the top of the, the West. No, they, they can't do that. But here's the other thing. If Keegan Murray isn't starting the first game, unless Keegan Murray is, is acting like Cleveland uh, or Philly Andrew Bynum in practice, Mike Brown should be fired before the national anthem finishes. <laughs> Stop it. No, nah, I'm being honest. Nah, Stop Keegan it. Murray should start. No, no, no. Stop nah. it. No, absolutely not. Keegan Murray should start. And truth be told, in Detroit, Bagley should start. Like, that lineup, that starting lineup, it looks good on paper, and, yeah, you can spare it the floor for drives and this, that, and the other. It doesn't work. It just, it just doesn't work. All right. So the, 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 the issue that I have with Keegan Murray is the only issue that's going to take time for him to fix and that he's going to need to bulk up if he's going to play the four. And he's not a three. Like, you can't start him at the three. You, you can't. He's not a three. He'll get 
he he will he will he will get ran around. He will get you know sped down on transitions. He's a four, um, and if you put him out there starting, like that just leaves Demontis Sabonis literally as your only rebounder. That's that's it, why they signed uh, Trey Lyles to two and a half million and traded for Metu. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I see the vision, but the thing is, is that. You can't make the mistake that the Knicks made with R.J. Barrett in that you're chasing this mediocre playoff spot and you're going to sacrifice the maximum development of your guy. Yeah, I disagree with the maximum development thing, man. Like, I, I, I just, I so wholeheartedly do. Um, like, Dallas Mavericks fans, and Rolo's up here on stage, we can get to him next. Uh, a lot of them say we need to start Jaden Hardy. Like, Jaden Hardy's not ready. Like they, neither is Keegan Murray necessarily to start. Keegan Murray might be more ready than Jaden, but the the issue again is the the curve to go from top five pick to starter is way more than the curve of a twenty eighth pick and fifteen minutes off the bench, right? So like, look at Tari Eason. He had a fantastic game in the loss to Miami. He's going to be the talk of the NBA Twitterverse for like the next week as the next Kawhi Leonard, the better Dennis Rodman. And yet, could he start? Sure. But if he starts, is he going to produce at 30 minutes or 28 minutes? The stat line that he just put out in like 18? No. Because he's not ready to to handle the bulk of the offensive uh play calling he's not ready he can do defense but like that's really where it is is offense and he's just not ready sorry nah you're right in that he's not ready i would argue play him anyway why so he can so he can double down on bad habits double down on bad habits Nah, that's what coaching is for that's what film room is for that's what that's what the 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 quick yank in the first quarter. Oh, like, so then you wanna you thing. wanna you wanna do you wanna kill his confidence to, and quick yank him after he goes over for four? It doesn't kill his confidence. Well, it does if it happens four or five times. Not if it's consistently for the same reasons. You can't quick yank him and he he has no idea why he got yanked. It's one of those things where he makes a mistake, he looks at the bench, and that's what you really want out of a player is you want him to make the mistake and then you want him to look at the bench because that then you know as a coaching staff and an organization, okay, he knows he messed up. So then you leave him in. But if he makes a mistake and he has no idea, that's where the coaching and the quick yank, the Spurs did this for 20 years. Different time. Said, Different time. But they have this model organization, pop for president, all this stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? And okay, like, so let me, let me ask you this. Let's say he comes off the bench and he averages 24 minutes and he leads all power forwards and then it's played. Did he really hurt his development? No. All right. There you go. I don't think that's, I don't think they're smart enough to do that, Chris. Oh, he's been getting 23 on average for the preseason. That's true. That's true. But they're still Sacramento. I just, I just don't trust them. Mike Brown. You just said Spurs model organization, Mike. Brown is going to bring stability to the Sacramento Kings. I think Mike Brown is there. That is a possibility. But the other side of that dice is that Mike Brown is, you know, I didn't say a lot of wins. I said stability. (laughs) (laughs) What What are you trying to put words in my mouth? I said stability. Like, He's going – he had them running suicides like they was in high school. Like, he's all about stability. Like, if you don't do this, this is what happens. There is no debating. Like, that's what he is. Like, I, full disclosure, the reason why I like Mike Brown, like, is because he coaches like I parent. Literally looks at Tim Duncan. Like, Mike Brown is a nobody. Looks at Tim Duncan. Says, Tim. If you do that, you're wrong. <laughs> who, who tells the greatest power forward when you're a nobody? If you do this, you're wrong. Like, he's he, the, the, only, the, the thing I worry about with Mike Brown 
is will he have a voice come Christmas? That's my worry. Like if he loses his voice by Christmas, like then we 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 might you might be right, Jay. Like you really might be right. Um, let me get Rolo in here. Uh, and Casey joined us. Maine has also popped up here. We'll come back with Jay from the uh, Recon- the Jay the Wakanda Tech Support because we got to talk some uh, Jackson State University stuff real quick before we head out of here. Uh, Rolo, good morning. Uh, one of the hosts of Seventy Seven Spaces, along with Jose, aka Paradox Killer Twenty Three. And Jazz, a.k.a. Scammer Sultan. Those are the handles you should follow. Rolo, uh, I saw your hand pop up. Coincidentally, I was talking about Jaden Hardy. What do you got? Oh, damn. I would like to use Rolo's time. <laughs> I would like to use Rolo's time to say free Luca. Let's get this started early. Hey, can you guys not hear me? Oh, uh, now uh, we got you. Now we uh, got you. I, I was talking the entire time, but it could be my connection. I'm driving right now, so sorry about that. Um, You're all right. Now, now I was just saying that uh, I was going to use my time real quick to, t- to talk about besides the, the Mavs and Jaden Hardy. We'll get, we'll get back to that. I wanted to talk. And he's out. <laughs> he, Free he, Luca. He, he's going to come back and listen to him, and he's just going to be so mad at his cell carrier. I hope you don't have AT&T, bro. I really don't. Bad look. Bad look for AT&T. AT&T is good down south. It's T-Mobile that'll leave you nervous. Have your uh, service looking nervous. No, I've, never, I've never had an issue with T-Mobile. Ever. They just don't like you, Jay. <laughs> uh, we'll go to Maine. Uh, we'll go to Maine. Then we got Casey because they haven't spoken yet. And we'll go up to Bankai because he's got a question uh, and then we're going to close out with Jay the Wakanda Tech Support talking uh, HBCUs and Jackson State University. Maine, uh, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you for popping in here. What you got? Yo, what's up, Chris? What's going on, fellas? How everybody doing? We good, um, we good. Hey, now, real quick, Chris, I just wanted to make sure. So you 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 still have Giannis as most dominant in the, in the NBA right now? Or you said you you, you moved on? Is it somebody Oh, no, else? no, he's still... He's still He's still the oh. most dominant player in the NBA. What I'm saying is the league has caught up to his dominance. And it was a sign that we're in a transitionary period because the players like Brandon Ingram are coming into their own. Zion will come into his own. Uh, you've got a whole rack of new young players uh, who are all entering their third and fourth year or second contract. R.J. Barrett, um, Jordan Poole, Tyler Hero. Um they are going to catch up to Giannis, is what I'm saying. Like that, sure. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you, you mentioned it. Who do you who do you have for MVP this season? I haven't picked an MVP. I like I'll probably oh, yeah, I, was, I was just gonna mention it's probably, is, is it hard to choose yet? Because ain't no basketball been played yet, so because it's picking. Well, th- yeah, it's it Vegas does a really good job of this, right? They play on the emotional um, tendencies of gamblers. And and in order to do that, what you need is to have um, a conflicting dual track. Uh, you need Jokic versus Embiid. You need Luka versus Steph. You need Trey Young versus whomever. And, and the honest answer is there's about eight people who could win the MVP right now, right? Just based upon the emotional f- the connection of the voter to the players come end of the season. Who knows? Cause remember everybody was saying DeMar the Rosen was washed. Well, I wasn't. And then like by Christmas, he was an MVP candidate. And then by the end of the season, he was gone. Right. Luca, who was top five in production across the board, didn't even really get an honest sniff <laughs> uh, because of Embiid and Jokic. Like, it, it's going to be so bad that, like, right now, it would be Luka because he's the only player that I see have a chance to go 30, 10, and 10. And if he goes 30, 10, and 10, like, why is he not the MVP? Hey, that's true. I ain't even think about that. Yeah, if he, he averaged a triple-double with 30. They got the yeah, they gotta give it to Luca. They they gave it to Westbrook and Luca would do it more efficiently and shooting threes. Right? Like and that's the problem because then you'll say, well, MB just had a 30, 10, and six. 
That's ex- or 32 and 7, which is what Jokic had and won it twice. Or you could even say Anthony Davis stays healthy, plays 71 games, and he gives you 28, 12, and 5 with two blocks, you know, and a steal. You know who did that? Giannis. That's how deep we are in talent, man. It's, it's, it's going to be a great season. Yeah, Luke, is my, Luke is my, my prohibitive favorite just because I see him as the only player going 30, 10, and 10. That has a chance. I, 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 got, I got KD. I mean, I, that's a good dark horse if they call it. So I don't think nobody's going to really pick that because it's like you said, it's just so much more talent in the league right now. He might be a little overlooked, but, you know, he put up a lot of points and they do good in the seasons. Um, he got a he got a good chance. Uh, K, KD, if Brooklyn gets fifty five wins, will be a top five MVP vote. Period. Uh, if he goes All Star game and gives us like um, twenty fourteen, KD goes for you that, know. That's the thing. Can he make it to the All Star game? Because that's always the point in time when he seemed like he get injured around that around that time. So he got He got to be healthy. Yeah, like he's he's if he can get above thirty, like this is the Dominique Wilkins theory. Not saying they're they're similar. The Dominique Wilkins theory was that Dominique should have been in the discussion more often for uh, MVP. Right? My argument was Charles Barkley. I'm a Sixers fan, and at that time I was young, and and I'd love to argue. Um, the the deck is so stacked against KD, right? That like. Dude's literally going to have to average 35 because people just associate him with not being LeBron or Steph now. And it's like not really fair because there's maybe only three players on the planet that you can make an argument to put above Kevin Durant in terms of playing basketball. And if that's the case, then objectively – if he goes 37 and six, like he did last year, uh, which puts him, you know, like top eight PER and a top five in production. Boom. There you go. Like, why is he not going to be considered? That's how deep we are. But again, it also shows us how we're getting ready to transition from one era to another, because we're now at the point where Trey young, Luka Doncic, um, and Giannis are going to be able to continually push, the people who have been entrenched for the last decade, which is also another reason why I've, I've moved Joel and B down on my MVP list because you have all these other dudes who are now younger producing the same or more. Great question, man. Appreciate it. Um, Rolo, you're back. We'll go to you. Then we'll go to Casey. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay, cool, cool. Who, who's your, who's your carrier? Uh, team old man. Oh, <laughs> point to Jay. <laughs> Told you. Yeah. Hey, um, no, just real quick, I wanted to touch on um, the Kings before I go into the Mavs and, and what we got coming up for 77 Spaces. Uh, Jay, hey, man, you, you got to realize who you're talking to. It's the shadow GM of the Kings. You know, of course he's going to want the Kings to make the playoffs. Of course, you know, he's going to talk up Mike Brown. You know, I mean, you, you know, you got to remember all these things whenever you're talking to Chris, man. Wait, 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 sure. wait, wait, wait. Mike Brown. Yeah. Mike Brown has a winning coaching record and multiple championships. No, I, I'm not. I'm not arguing with you about that, Chris. I'm just saying that when he's talking to you about the Kings and and our expectations, because you know what, Chris, I'm with you. I think the Kings are going to be in the ninth seed this year. I don't know why I have that feeling. I'm going to go through my uh, uh, go through the schedule and figure out who's going to be where and who's going to drop. But yeah, I just have this feeling that the Kings are actually going to, there's no expectations on the Kings. Seattle just uh, finished their drought into getting the playoffs. So I think the Kings are finally going to end their playoff drought or play in drought, I guess, and show up as a ninth seed this season. I like it. Um, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> um, it would require three teams to, to drop, and I only see two teams well, dropping. First of all, First of all, if Chris was the Kings GM, everybody would have been sold, and he'd been trying to win nine games from Vic. Let's get like I respect Chris's basketball mind that much. There's no way he would have kept oh. De'Aaron Fox. Well, if if or one, Simonis, if, like, if I was a, if I was a G, yeah, if I was a GM, Sam Presti doesn't have all the picks he's got. Jay's right. <laughs> like Jay is right on that. If I was the GM, Rolo, like Sack looks completely different. Point to Jay. Jay is 
racking these points up, man. On fire. So, and then the last thing I wanted to come in and share: seventy-seven spaces. We've been having um, interview series over the over the summer during the off season. So we have one last one that we're going to be doing with with our friend Istok Franco. He's a writer for uh, D Magazine. He's Slovenian. Um, so he's been following the, obviously the Slovenian national team, but he also does a lot of good um, insight as far you know mathematically into um, different. In- so, uh, so yeah, I mean. Uh, follow us there. It's going to be tomorrow at 5 p.m. Central since he is in Slovenia. So we're trying to do this interview uh, to help accommodate him. Uh, the last interview of the summer before we get into all of our pregame spaces and, uh, you know, 77 spaces for the regular season. So thanks, Chris. Thanks always for all the support, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. And make sure you get that tweet to me about the show card so we can try to get it out there. Uh, you know, we, we want to make sure – that everybody who wants to actually have a you know a great conversation about the history of Luca um, to have a chance to listen in and maybe even ask a question. Appreciate you, uh, Rolo. Just like I appreciate Jose. Uh, two people who came in and said, "Hey, we really like what you're doing." I said, "Hey, I think y'all would be great at it," and they they did it. So here we are. Shout out to you, everybody. Give them a round of applause. All right. Well, I was about to go to Casey. Uh, and then, well, Casey's gone. Uh, we'll go to Bonkai. We'll get Bonkai's final thoughts uh, or question. Bonkai, go ahead. Yeah, Chris. Uh, so with, you know, the draft being so stacked uh, next season and everybody wanting Wimbenyama, what, what, what team do you think is going to finish with the worst record? Are we going to see a historic, a, a historic, like, record low for wins this season? No, no. That, no. Nah. San Antonio... Uh, we'll probably have the, the lowest record. That's what I got right now. That's quick. Yeah. Well, it's it's not hard. <laughs> that was quick. Yeah, it's, San Antonio. Yeah. No, nah, it's 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 not hard. Uh let me let me explain why. Um and I'm I'm actually a huge fan of a lot of their uh players, individually speaking. Um they they, they are going to trade probably um a top five rebounding and defensive center and Jakob Podol sooner or later. Right now, they're, they're just saying the price is high at two first-round picks. Come trade deadline, uh, that's that's one first-round pick. Uh, Doug McDermott is probably going to be gone, too. He's at 12 mil. He's a vet. He can play the three or four, and he can stretch the floor. Um, that's it, right? Like, that's it. After that, they're going to be playing Zach Collins and Gorgie Day. Right, or they're going to start Jeremy uh, uh, Sochin, a rookie out of Baylor who didn't get any run during the summer because of COVID and an injury. They only have two players uh, who are athletic and can score, and one of them isn't a shot creator. Uh, that's Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell, and then they have Trey Jones. I'm a huge fan of Trey Jones. Uh, I think he is a point guard similarly to like T.J. McConnell, uh, his brother. Uh, Michael Adams back in the day, he's going to give you 10 to 14, but he's going to run the offense. He's going to get you six to eight assists. He's going to play high and efficient. But, like, that's it. They're going to be playing Joshua Primo, Blake Wesley, Jordan Hall, Malachi Branham, Devisell. Like, these are all young dudes, and and they're they're not there to be there for a long time. Um, So you're talking 23 and under. I don't okay. think I don't think they get as bad as what you know uh, my sixes were during the process, um, but I don't see anybody else. It's going to be hard to lose or, or to win less than twenty games this year. Okay. Um, San Antonio, Orlando, because of health, have the best shot. Not a bad list. I mean, well, it's a bad list, but I mean, like, not I know a bad list mean. in terms of like you know what teams. Are going to be bad this year, unless Damian Lillard goes down. If Dane, if Dane goes down to injury, say goodbye to Portland. <laughs> but one more thing, uh, my sleeper, personally, my sleeper for for MVP, and I think it'll take him maybe like, and just because I know how great this guy is, right? Before he got injured and all that, I think it'll take him a month, and then he'll start to get rolling. I think Kawhi Leonard. Uh, I think some people kind of forgot him, forgot about him, but. 
I think if the Clippers can stay healthy this season and he himself can stay healthy, I, I, that's my sleeper. Well, you know what? I Okay, I'll give you a sleeper, right? And and this might this might kind of shock some people. John ja Morant. John ja Morant could be a sleeper MVP candidate. He'll start the season without arguably the second best player. Um, and and I, I have trip over Desmond Bain, uh, barely, but he's above. The def- the, the help defense is just godlike. He could do better rebounding. He could stretch the floor just like Desmond Bain. He can guard two through five competently. He can guard the lesser ones. Uh, Desmond Bain runs the floor well, shoots the ball well, skips leg day well, right? Like, John Morant is that offense. And if John Morant comes out, plays 70-plus games at 27, 10 assists, five boards, the, the – the giddy will will carry him through to Jay the Wakandan Tech Support's ear or ire, however you want to pronounce it. I mean, that's not a bad pick. I, I honestly didn't see him as a sleeper because I kind of just had him there by the fault. Like I think he can he he can just do it, but don't let KP hear that because he won't be too happy. He <laughs> can't stand John Moran, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a lot of people who can't. Uh, they just gonna have to get over it. But like, look. He's going to start with uh, Steven Adams, Santi Adama, Dylan Brooks, Desmond Bain. Like, I'm sorry, again, love Desmond Bain. Nothing out there is shocking you. But they have a, f- a wonderful coach, great offensive philosophy, and you saw how good they were without him. He takes the step, right? It's all personal development. It's the- nothing that coaching staff can do. This is going to have to be John his own. But if he takes that step and, and gets Trey Young-like numbers, He's more popular than Trey Young. He'll he'll get more votes than Trey Young. Like that's another sleeper, by the way. Let the Hawks be a two C. Good night. <laughs> um, let me let me move over to Ben, fellow Sixers fan. It's been a minute, Ben. It's good to see. You. How you doing? Hey, what's up? As everyone moved over to Twitter, so I'm kind of late to the game. Um, I actually um, good takes. I like the Kawhi Leonard thing. Um, I. Uh, what was I going to say? I actually think it, it, it's going to be Embiid off of uh, team record and his usage is going to go down. I think he he will approach. I don't know if he'll get. I think he'll approach the being the first center to get 50, 40, 90. And that my basis of that is his usage will be down. So like the previous season, he shot like 87%. So I think he'll get it off that. He won't. He probably won't lead the league in scoring again. But I think um, the Sixers will probably win over 60 games. So he'll get it off of being the best player on the best team. which And, and probably like a makeup, like he should have won it two years ago. So um, I think Embiid will be the MVP. The Sixers, I, I, I mean, the Melon, the Melon trade is probably one of the biggest steals of the offseason so far. I know it's only preseason, but uh, that dude can play. And um, I think the Grizzlies are going to struggle. I think um, – a little bit um, because the Clippers and the Nuggets are really good. And if they stay healthy, they're going to challenge the Grizzlies. Um, and then I think it's Luca. I would say. Luca is going to be like putting up crazy numbers because his team is not very good right now. So um, he might he, – he'll give – I think he's the – he'll probably be in contention for the MVP too. And um, – yeah, I think um, – are we just kind of like rattling off like whatever? Just, no, no. well, we, we weren't. There, it was a, a specific question from Maine about uh, MVP. I, I try not to give a, a preseason MVP. It, it, yeah. it's, it's just it's, – it's asinine. Uh, people didn't think DeMar DeRozan was going to have a career, uh, and he was number one for like six weeks on people's MVP ballots. You don't know what happens in the season. Um and there's too many good players. There's just too many good players. Uh, but I got a question. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I see, man. Uh, congratulations. Uh, the Staircase on HBO Max. Uh, let's talk about it, man. Uh, congratulations. How was, what was that like? Oh, uh, it's funny. I never talked about work on uh, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I just worked on one episode. So yeah. I play right. like a, a real-life person, a lawyer. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, it's funny. I don't go on here to talk about work. Um, <laughs> I just had, uh, I just had to ask, man. Like I I I just had to ask. Like yeah, I think I it's phenomenal. With, I work with Colin Firth. They're super cool. Um, yeah, everyone. It was like a really good production to work on. Uh, yeah, anytime, I'm, anytime you work on HBO or like Showtime, it's way better. It's like, well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a yeah. huge fan of Colin Firth. The King's Speech was phenomenal. Yeah, really, really like, like the nicest person. Uh, yeah, he's super nice, super chill. Right. Um, yeah, appreciate you, Ben. Thanks. Hey, uh, question: You missed the, you missed the Tyrese Maxi uh, stuff earlier. Um, Who would you rather have? Honestly, Tyrese Maxey or Jordan Poole? Definitely. Um, I I think um, definitely Maxey. Um, he's a better ball handler as a point guard. Um, he's faster. Uh, it's, it's interesting they even compare them because if the Sixers had the – I mean, I guess they have Harden now. But, no, I, th- I don't even really see – I think if you put Maxi on that Warriors team, like what would he do? I think that's kind of a question. Right. I think like if you put Maxi on that Warriors team, um, yeah, he'd be putting up way better numbers in my opinion. All right. But I, I like Jordan Poole though. To, to be honest, I just think Maxi might make the All Star team this year. I think he's that good. Like the way his games improved. I I just had to ask, man. I had to ask because. You know, apparently we we you know the 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 pool party and the hero party together, uh, they didn't like each other, and then you know somebody wanted to add in Maxi, and I'm sitting here like I don't really see how it's attributable, but I, I am about the fairness of the people. Uh, Bankai, last last thing, Bankai, what you got? Yeah, two things real quick. I want to give a shout out to Breeze right there on the on the audience, Emily and Josh. Um, and what what are you expecting from Tyrese Maxi this season, Chris? Uh, 20 points, four boards, four assists, and a steal and a half, 40% from three, 48 from the floor, 88 from the line. All right. All right. I, I definitely think he can do it, too. I do, too. I'm, I, I like Maxi. I really you, do. You know what's one guy, too, that I think that I think can, can, can take a decent leap this year or a good leap as well? And, and, and Sometimes people tend to compare them a little bit, and also because they played in college uh, quickly, Emmanuel quickly. I don't know what you think about quick. Um, not as an efficient shooter. Take, I don't think he's going to take that crazy of a leap like Maxi, obviously. But I think I think he can be he can be a good player. Not as an efficient shooter. Um, he's, he's had he's had time to fix it. My my issue is it's it's just not a pretty shot. It's not a pretty shot. <laughs> um, he 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 needs to pull up. He's not a catch and shoot, and the the role that the Knicks have him in is catch and shoot, and it's it's to his detriment. Um, one w- when he had that like two week stretch, it was because he was a a Lou Will ball dominant combo guard off the bench. I would put him off the bench as a combo guard and say, yo. Look at tape of Lou Will. Look at tape of Jamal Crawford. Go ham when you get in. I, I, to be honest, I wouldn't even be mad at something like that. I, I know there's a few people, there's some Nick fans that, that see him as more than that, though. Like, they don't want to close him into that type of role. But honestly, I think there's times where, like, he's a lot better, like you say. Like, when he doesn't have to handle the ball and, like, you know, set up everybody else. Like, when he can just focus on scoring. Necessarily, I think I think that's his best role. To be honest, to, to, when he came out, um, the comp that I gave him was Reggie Jackson, and I don't see any change from that. So there you go. All right, thank you. He's fa- he's he's faster though. Let me put it that he's a faster version because because Reggie Jackson I don't think was as, as fast as IQ. No, um, but Reggie yeah. Jackson never struck me as the speed type of guy just just like he's crafty with the ball at times he's just not really quick though yeah yeah but uh but but in terms of like that's i think his ceiling um if you're trying to make him into something he's not i think if you make him into a uh, jordan clarkson role jamal crawford role he carves out a, a 10-year career uh and he'll help some team win a championship that way like he's, he's gonna stay he's too athletic uh, he, he's, he, he's got range. He's, he's just not a point guard. 
All right. Uh, I see uh, Josh Rodriguez down below, ladies and gentlemen, host of the Dime NBA on Ball is Life, uh, award-winning Webby producer. You got to check him out uh, over at the Dime NBA on Ball is Life, also producing uh, the Volume Sports Show. Shoot him a follow. Uh, you'll, you'll see me up there sooner or later again because the man is that good. He's that talented. And if you want good basketball talk without necessarily um, some of the uh, hot takery, like that's why I'm saying follow him. He's good. Like He's a great guy. Uh, Emily Austin in the building. If you missed out on her interview series over the summer at Summer League, shame on you. It was one of the best interview series you could possibly have. Uh, she interviewed likes of Scotty Pippen Jr., Chet Holmgren, and others, and you can catch it on her page, Emily Austin. That's the handle. I want to give a big thanks to my Mavs family that adopted me into another group chat, uh, Jose, Rolo, and Jazz. If you uh, are a team group chat, if you got a group chat for a team, um, reach out before you add me. Because I had said, like, man, I would like to be uh, added to this Ra Raptors chat, like a really cool Raptors chat. I was added to like 13 Raptors chats and, and like they weren't cool. They were very mean. <laughs> but, <laughs> like I can't even tell you some of the things they said because it was that hilariously bad and mean. Anyway, um, Jay, I want to give you some extra time, right? The reason why I want to give you some extra time is Jackson State University needs to be talked about more. So even if this is not basketball related, Jay, we can talk about Jackson State University. What do we have uh, for the Mighty Tigers? Oh, man, we can make it about basketball. Uh, Mo Williams, uh, a.k.a. Peanut, when he was down here hooping in high school, um, has recruited really, really well. He's got a big – I think he, they list him at 6'8", six, 6'9", six, from Chicago, and then they got a little point guard from Chicago. He's somewhere between 5'9", five, 5'11". He says he's going to run a complicated offense. This is college, he, although it is D1. Um, that has yet to be seen, but they have some big boys visiting. Same thing with um, Tamika Reed, the uh, Jackson State ladies, Tigers coach. They went undefeated in conference play last year and gave LSU all they can handle. And without some home cooking by the refs, they may win that tourney game. Um, so they're looking good. Uh, you know, an undefeated conference run two years in a row would be, you know, quite unprecedented. So I'm not going to put that kind of pressure on her. But that program also has uh, some big programs visiting, um, which is a big deal. And so I'm very much looking forward to Jackson State College uh, basketball, both women and men's. Um, football, uh, we're back on top. And – the way we've gotten on top, Irks, uh, SWAC, traditionalists, if you're not familiar, SWAC is the conference, the Southwest Athletic Conference. Um, and this whole Dion's not SWAC thing is true, but it's not true. Dion is not a SWAC traditionalist. He is talking about putting 60 on guys, um, and he's selling – games the same way Muhammad Ali would sell fight and it's rubbing traditionalists the wrong way because in the golden era of Eddie Robinson W.C. Gordy and others there was this quote unquote gentlemanly um, aura that the great coaches had but here's the dirty secret about the SWAC's golden era the black press covered those coaches that way because of respectability politics. The, when, when Valley had Willie Satellite Totten and, and uh, Jerry Rice, they would, of course, double and triple team Jerry Rice. During a game, he literally had Jerry Rice swap jerseys with one of his teammates, another wide receiver. And so they were doubling and triple teaming 88, and all of a sudden the ball was going to, let's say, 27. I forget the guy's number. And they didn't figure out until the post-game handshakes. And they were shaking at 27. They're like, oh, man, we didn't know they had two of them. And he looked at his face like, oh, here's Jerry Rice. Right? So you have all sorts of shenanigans that's been happening in the SWAC to win and all that stuff. But, but Dion is asking the correct questions, but growth is uncomfortable. And – in order for us 
as a black community to do better, we should examine everything. Doesn't mean we throw away everything. Doesn't mean we change everything. But examining everything to ask, can we do this better? Is this healthy? Is this whatever? I think that's fair. And I think that's a great way to go about life. Um, and people don't like it. And I get why they don't like it. I get why it's uncomfortable. But I think it's necessary. And, yeah, I, I think what's going on. I think what we're seeing, uh, especially with like Deion Sanders and now Mo Williams, because Mo Williams is is probably going to do the same thing um is what what i would call um reclamation Uh, the hbcu idea uh was born out of a time of segregation right it was required uh over the course of its existence it's tried to live separate but equal without living separate but equally as opposed to acquiescing to what um, larger institutions that are non-HBCUs wanted. And like this dates back to, and and I don't have the correct years, but this dates back after Jerry Rice uh, when HBCUs were trying to get funding, but also at the same time legitimacy in the realm of um, collegiate athletics because we, we went from, you know, maybe Oklahoma, Miami, Texas making money to then like Texas Tech making money, Cincinnati making money, and the HBCUs weren't making money. Uh, And then you you had what I think was probably the worst thing that could happen. Jay, you can correct me on this. The traditionalists got in control. And the difference between the HBCU and black community traditionalists and then, say, the regular NCAA traditionalist, is these guys, they grew up in the system of we're separate but equal, even though in reality and on the uh, uh, ledger, it was anything but the truth. And it, it persisted because we have legends from the SWAC who continue to hold on. So Dion comes in, and, and he's going to do what Elon Musk did for space and satellites. Dion comes in, he's going to do to retail what Amazon did, right? Um, And it's uncomfortable because it challenges everything you know and everything you've come to accept to be. So, like, I applaud him. I just wouldn't do it about it the same way. But that's just because he's Dion. And he's prime time. And as I always say, you can do and say whatever you want in this country as long as you can afford the consequence. And he's making a gamble that he can afford any consequence because he's saying, look at where y'all been. If that's what you want, go ahead. But we want better and we want more. And I applaud him for that. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, there's several factors. Um Like, uh, if you're a a law nut or a history nut, you know, you can go look up the Ayers case, um, and that's separate but equal but not really is been the benchmark of Southern tradition since they convinced – well, not convinced because Andrew Johnson was was a bigot and a racist. He couldn't wait to pull the federal troops out the South. But that's where you go from Reconstruction to to Jim Crow. Um, And so, for example – you know, people talk about, well, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, you know, white people will love to tell you that they got it out the mud. And when you do the history, and you do the research, what you find out is nine times out of 10, they have federal assistance, whether it's the Homestead Act, whether it's uh, FDR's uh, work program, it's always federal assistance. And it's the same thing with Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Scott Field was literally a patch of grass on campus. FDR puts in his new deal. Then they build a 20,000-seat stadium. Uh, Vault Hemingway. Oh, shoot. It wasn't even that. They were ordered to pay half a billion dollars. Yeah, they were in the Ayers case. But the key was the judge did not give them the lump sum. What they said was Jackson State had to recruit, I want to say 10%, or, and it was increasing each year. Yeah, of non-black nine, students. Non-black students to get the money over 10 years. So even when we won, we didn't really win and get to use the money to help us only. We had to, quote, unquote, expand our mission. 
right? Well, and well, that's, well, and that's they, what FAMU is dealing with right now. There, there, there is a caveat to that, and and it's it's never really put in um, uh, any of the briefs or summaries that you read. And if people don't understand, uh, you will get the the written judgment, and then you oftentimes get the brief, right, or a summary. You're not reading the entire judgment, and within right. the judgment, the the reason why was that one of the justices, and it is a valid legal argument said, if we didn't, then a Mississippi student who was white and was denied access to HBCU while receiving federal funding would be able to sue said institution for discrimination. Uh, that, that was the compromise. That's why that was placed in there. It's just not in the summary, and it, 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 it tends to end up being like a footnote because it, it ended up being irrelevant. Oh, no, I understood the legal argument. The only issue is that Jackson State is the only major university in an urban environment in Mississippi. Um, and so any white student who wanted to go to Jackson State wasn't getting turned down because of their race. It's like that lady who sued uh, Texas and Austin saying that she was discriminated against and this, that, and the other because she was white because minorities were getting scholarships and she lost her case too. Like it's, it's just a patently ridiculous thing, but you're right in that they had to, I guess, couch it so that Jackson State was protected because, you know, racism is going to racism. Um, but Dion is doing it in a way where there's, there's this, and you see it in the black community among other things, like mental health, um, diet, whatever, where the question is what should the black community discuss in-house versus what should we discuss in the public square? And that's really the debate you're seeing with what Dion is doing for HBCUs because in a sense, Dion is one of the few human beings who could do what he's doing the way that he's doing it. And I think that is not acknowledged enough. Like Ed Reed wants to coach. Ed Reed is also the greatest of all time at his position, but Ed Reed's demeanor, Ed Reed's cachet, Ed Reed's persona and celebrity is different than Dion's, and that's just the difference between their personality. So if Ed Reed was the coach at Jackson State and winning the way uh, uh, Dion is, Ed Reed would probably have these same issues, but Ed Reed would just handle it differently and I think that would make a lot of people more comfortable but Dion went to Mississippi Valley and asked what could he do to help them get a practice field he's asked he's held a conference of SWAT coaches asking all right what does everybody need how do we attack this so Dion is very much trying to lead from the front and bring the SWAT as a collective forward but I think Dion as all people coming into a tradition and anybody that's in here that's still involved in church and tried to get a church to do a different ministry uh, that was established by, you know, deacons that's retired knows that it takes a while to turn that ship, right? And, and the thing is, Dion wants change, but Dion does not have a 10-year plan. He doesn't say, hey, listen, we as a SWAC, we need to expand to 16 teams by this date. When we have 16 teams, we need to we need to across the board have this percentage of attendance on home games. And then once we do here, we get this media deal or while we're setting that up, uh, we're concurrently setting up a swag network. We're setting up a website, social media presence. Blah, yeah, blah, you, it's, it's 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 modernizing um, the yeah, swag and, and, yeah. and, and the and MIAC no, and, had the same well, problem. We yeah, were running and, out of and, time. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It, it, and that's the problem with black athletics is that we didn't have the fan base or the alumni to do what other conferences did. Like you wrap, you know, wrap, wrap it up, Jay. I'm sorry. And so, and so progress is not linear and progress is painful, but we're making progress is the best way to sum it up. Uh, yeah, I, I just want to add, like, I, I'm bringing this up because we, we had talked about a couple of things earlier in regards to 
uh, overtime elite, the G League Ignite. Uh, what are we going to do with nil? And and this is happening in the world of basketball too. It's just not really being talked about. Uh, two years ago, uh, Mako and Maker signing with Howard University opened the door for five star recruits to seriously consider HBCUs. And and one thing that I think we'll see uh, as we we go through another iteration of reclamation because that that's what this is. It's not reconstruction. It's reclamation because we have to reclaim it. Is is um. That's what uh, Cornell West said. If you don't know who he is, uh, look, that I've got nothing for you, Google. Um, and and that is, that is, I think, also a sign of how we are entering a new era in sport. Uh, if you correlate it to how players are now able to manage their individual brands, able to manage their individual businesses outside the construct of basketball, uh, you, you can see like the mechanisms of change. And, and I, I, I'm using this to preface this. We're going to have an uncomfortable conversation one day, and it's going to be centered around why Shaq can't be an NBA owner. And it might be because there's only room for one, and it might be LeBron. But, like, what are we going to do when all of these players who have the financial means to be an owner want to be an owner? Just foreshadowing a, a, a very, very interesting, hard conversation uh, that we're going to have in, in, in years' time that, that's just going to sneak up on us. All right. It's that's not all even I... owners. It's, it's coaches, too. Like, well, that... well like... coaches are different. They, they, they've got their own association, and, and they have something um, that players don't have, and, and that is a more linear relationship uh, with professional other professional organizations, right? Like a coach gets fired, he gets his paycheck, he can go anywhere. A player gets fired, then it's really a question of why, and then they don't have the same opportunities to go down a level. They can't be an assistant coach or assistant player. I mean, in the NBA, they got to go to another league. So, like that, the, the coaching aspect actually highlights part of the issue we have, and and it's proven in my opinion why we see so many retreads like Charlotte hiring Steve Clifford again. Anyway, I, I got to get going two minutes over. Hey, fellas, if she ain't wearing your hoodie, you need to step your game up. Head over there to slamgood.com. Pick up your hoodie. You literally pick it up. 15% off promo code hoop spaces. Be like Zach. Zach got it. It's dope. Survival of the fittest. You could save 15% off of that. Heading over to slamgoods.com. I'm going to hit this button for some music. Yeah. All right. We got basketball tonight. Can't wait for it. We're going to have a basketball talk tomorrow. We will be back tomorrow, Wednesday, 10 a.m. Please, if you haven't and you're down below, shoot us a follow. Head over to hoopspaces.com. The Eastern Conference preview is up. Um, let us know what you think, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Peace out.